are good morning and welcome to the Denford factory here in West Yorkshire where we are getting ready for the F1 in Schools UK National Final 2020 supported by Lenovo. So you could join us and I'll be taking you through all the action today. Joining me on the desk, socially distanced of course, uh, Georgina Edwards, a former F1 in Schools National Finalist and also currently studying product design engineering as part of the team. Georgina, morning to you and how exciting is this? A final always has those nerves and energy. All of the people waiting to race on the track are going to be very excited today, aren't they? Oh yes, they definitely are. Hopefully we'll get down to some good racing, meet all the teams and... Yes, hopefully it'll be a great show. Yeah, so for you, the most exciting part, you're looking forward to seeing how the cars perform on the track today. Yes, yes, definitely. Seeing which cars are the fastest. There's some great designs here, so it'll be very interesting. Some close races, hopefully. Hopefully, fingers crossed on that. So uh, that is the team on the desk. We also have here at the Denford factory, uh, we've uh, collated, put it all together, what I'm calling the expert corner, uh, just to my left, in fact. Uh, Sophie Harker, so great to have you with us. An aerospace engineer, IET Young Women Engineer of the Year 2018. Uh, you are, well, morning to you, first of all. Morning. Uh, excited for all the action today? I am indeed, yeah. It's my first time being part of uh, Formula One in school, so I am really excited. There's been some little nuances between the cars that I'm excited to see how they're going to how they're going to look. Yeah, indeed. And obviously, you'll be bringing your expert analysis, uh, being able to look at the designs of the car, which we'll talk about later on. Uh, that will be your sort of role for today. It will be indeed, yes. So we're going to talk about a few of the ones to watch, as it were, and some of the technical reasons as to why I think they might be a bit interesting. So, yeah, it's going to be good. OK, look forward to it. And it's OK, just to double check, Sophie, it's OK to call it uh, Expert Corner. We, we can try. <laughs> try our best to be at the expert corner. <laughs> OK, perfect. Well, listen, uh, I've introduced you now to the team. There is, of course, the F1 and Schools team behind the scenes. Uh, smaller than normally uh, previous regionals and nationals, but they are working tirelessly and hard uh, to make sure everything runs smoothly uh, today. Let's get straight into telling you what's happening. We have 16 professional classes, 17 developmental classes. Uh, going head to head uh, in the races today and then that's if you take those points that they will receive from that with work they've already submitted and the judges have already started uh, to judge those uh, add that all together later on in the award ceremony we'll be able to announce the new UK Champions, very exciting stuff and um, hopefully and I hope that on this screen we'll be able to chat teams uh, via Zoom and find out a little bit more about their car designs uh, that obviously Georgina and I can break down a little bit with Sophie's help. Um, so over the course of the show we'll also be explaining what actually is involved in F1 in schools and how you make an F1 car of the future. That is all on the way but first of all I'd like to say good morning to Mr Andrew Denford, founder and chairman of F1 in schools. Uh, good morning Andrew. Good morning. Morning Tom. Uh, so yes, uh, it, I would like to know like how you are envisaging everything happening today. Well, it's going to be a first ever for us. i uh, just like to say a big welcome to everybody who's watching us, to all the teams, to our first ever behind closed doors, first UK national final. But this actually, Tom, is our 20th UK national final. Um, we started back here 21 years ago, um, eight schools in West Yorkshire. And now we've spread about 26, uh, sorry, 26,000 schools in over 52 uh, countries around the world. So, you know, incredible to think that we're back here where it all began. Indeed. And, and obviously, a lot of people are going to be uh, wishing everyone that's competing today uh, the best of luck. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they've lived with us for the last six months. It's been a really difficult time for everyone in schools and for all the teams themselves. They went through all the regionals. And of course, the winning teams have, uh, have stuck with it. They've done incredible verbal presentations. We've seen the portfolios and uh, it's looking really good. And I'd like to thank them all really for bearing with us just to get to this point now where we can actually deliver a UK national event and decide who is going to be on the podium and heading to next year's world finals. So fingers crossed on that one. But I mean, from an F1 in schools perspective, you know, we couldn't have done this without the support of Formula One. Um, we're indebted to them. We're indebted to the Formula One community itself. And one of our very first patrons was a gentleman called James Allen. Uh, he joined us in uh, 20, sorry, 2001. And uh, he'd just like to say a few words to you all. Hey, everybody. It's uh, James Allen here. I'm just sending you a message to wish you uh, all the very best for the uh, national finals. And congratulations to all of you for, for making it through to the finals. That's a, a fantastic achievement. My involvement in the competition uh, goes back 
well, 20 years almost now to uh, when I started to support it, I could see immediately this was a, a fantastic competition uh, right in that sort of sweet spot of science, technology, engineering, maths. And as the years have gone on, the, particularly the, the amount of girls who've participated in it and encouraged a lot of young women to, to take up engineering as a career. We've seen people coming through to work in Formula One and motorsport and, and all sorts of really meaningful engineering careers. So it's something that um, Andrew and Dave and, and all of the team around the world should be very, very proud of. Um, this has not been an easy year for any of us um, and it's getting stranger all the time. So. Um, really, really well done for, for sticking with it and to education, which has been, I know myself, I'm, um, I'm a father of a, of a boy who's just gone into to year 12. And so I know all about how disruptive, this is. but uh, well done for, for your resilience. And, um, and as I say, yeah, these skills that you're learning are, are very transferable into the world of engineering and into the world of motorsport. And we've seen plenty of graduates go through. So all the very best and uh, and all the best to the winners um, through to the world finals good luck so james was uh, very instrumental in our uh, networking within formula one um obviously getting in on board with formula one management in 2005 and becoming f1 in schools officially james then helped us uh, network within the the formula one paddock and getting all the formula one teams behind us um was was been tremendous for for f1 in schools just uh, being able to provide trophies at the World Finals, garage tours, factory tours. It's something that you just could never expect 21 years when we started. And the Formula One paddock continues to embrace what we do and we've got some words of encouragement from the Formula One paddock over in Sochi. Hello and welcome to the F1 in Schools UK Virtual National Finals. I just want to wish all the best to the 31 teams competing. I know you'll do some fantastic work and we hope to see you soon. Cheers. Welcome to the UK Nationals. We wish you the best of luck. Sorry you can't be there in person, but I'm sure the racing's going to be great and I look forward to seeing the podium win his name. Hey guys, Alex here. Just wanted to say good luck to everyone competing in the UK Virtual National Final this month. Um, you're all great. Uh, get so one day, many of you watching hopefully will be working in as Lewis family said, uh, in 2009 at our UK National, sorry, World Finals that uh, he'd look forward to seeing the uh, participants there working at McLaren. Believe it or not, many of them are now and reform teams. So uh, all it needs for me to say to all our partners and sponsors, I couldn't have made it without you. And good luck to everybody watching. Fingers crossed. I know you can watch me bait of breath. So uh, look forward to the action. Tom, over to you. Thank you so much was expert corner to history corner there knowing the process that f1 in schools has gone through absolutely and encouraging words from lando norris Albon, and George. is that would that make people a little bit more nervous now would you yeah more nervous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, resilience there is a word i know that we're going to be hearing about uh, a lot today now you heard me mention earlier on about the development class and the professional class just now here is a uh, to introduce you to the F1 in School STEM Challenge and its competition class. Formula One in Schools is split into three classes of entry. Entry class, development class and professional class. Think of these as stepping stones much like Formula 3, Formula 2 and Formula 1. For the UK National Finals, development and professional class teams get the chance to compete. They share a few things in common in the competition. For example, the competition format, which is the same for both classes. They each get the same time on track, with four races each. The judging categories are the same, albeit some of the assessables vary in size. Where they differ, the technical regulations set out for each class, development and professional class designed to different rules. The awards categories are slightly different, so development and professional class teams get to fight for their own awards. And progression opportunities to the World Finals are slightly different for each class. Teams are awarded points in seven areas, encompassing the design process and marketing activities needed to get to F1 in schools. A grand total of 970 points are for all teams. Let's take a closer look at the dev class then, which is for 11 to 19 year olds for one year only. Here cars are a step up from entry, but still some way short of the pro class rules. 
The UK national champions can progress to the world finals, having made two CNC manufactured cars, produced two five page portfolios, engineering drawings, a verbal presentation, a marketing pit display, and a marketing sponsorship and digital media strategy document. The professional class represents the highest tier of F1 in schools. Here, competitors from 11 to 19 years can compete for as many years as they wish, with the ultimate goal to arrive at the F1 in schools world finals. Accessibles are much the same as development class, but the pro class have two 10-page portfolios to produce. Here, the champions, the second place and third place team can progress through to the world finals. Let's take a closer look at the cars then, side by side. The development class and the professional class both have similar rules, but they vary in some key ways. First of all, the weight of the cars. Development class must be a 60 gram minimum weight, whereas the professional class get a bit of extra performance from having a 10 gram lower minimum weight of 50 grams. Development class teams must start with a no-go zone, which essentially is a minimum volume for the chassis of the car. Professional class teams simply have to include space for a virtual cargo, a much smaller volume, which gives the teams more freedom, but also a bit more to think about with their aerodynamic surfaces. Development class teams use the standard wheels provided by F1 in schools, whereas professional class cars use custom wheels, where the teams design, research, manufacture, test, and then finesse their own wheels using any material they see fit. Development class again use standard axles, where the professional class can go their own way. Both cars use an 8 gram CO2 compressed air cartridge to fire them down the racetrack up to speeds of 50 km an hour in development class and an eye-watering 75 km an hour in the professional class. Blink and you'll miss them, but will any of the teams have what it takes to break the one second barrier? How good was that video? Uh, thank you very much to Mark, part of the F1 in Schools team, uh, putting that all together just to bring everybody up to speed about the differences between the two classes. Uh, did you compete in the development class? I didn't. I went straight into the professional class. Wow. So yeah, just one year. And then done. And then done, yeah. <laughs> uh, what was the, start, the second fastest car, I believe, Georgina? It was. We uh, unfortunately lost out to another team. Hey, listen, it happens. So you'll be able to uh, relate to everyone when they go through the racing later on today. So you've been there, done that. Listen, if you didn't catch everything from that video, then don't worry. You can go to f1inschools.co.uk for more information. It'll also tell you how you can get involved in the challenge if you want to compete uh, in next year in 2021. Uh, and if you have any questions throughout the show today, uh, the team is on hand uh, you can email us at contact us at f1inschools.co.uk or as you're watching on YouTube right now on the F1 in Schools YouTube channel uh, you can drop it in the comments uh, if you would like to or we do have the socials as well we are on Twitter Instagram and on Facebook all the same at F1 in Schools UK um, plus as I mentioned the F1 in Schools team is around today to answer any questions if they come up at any points during the show but there's more videos on the way for you and don't forget to look in the description on YouTube right now as you'll see the whole race schedule uh, which is very exciting now uh, Georgina uh, a question for you can I ask you a question yes of course you can okay uh, I want to know and I want you to explain to everyone at home going to work today the racing so the racing is going to happen right here we have a 20 meter long track factory uh, so the teams will have created two identical cars car a and car b so car a will always race in lane one and car b will always race in lane two mm. uh, so the two identical cars will go down the track and then we'll see which is the winner. Yeah, now I didn't mention it earlier with Andrew, but every year I've taken part in the finals or the regionals, I've always gone against him in the reaction test. Uh, but obviously there isn't any teams here today. So how's that gonna work? Who's gonna be pulling the trigger? So instead of having the trigger, we're just gonna have Oscar, our race manager, who is going to release the cars. So the five lights will come on as in a normal F1 race, uh, but rather than them being released by the teams, because unfortunately we can't have them here, it, they will go out simultaneously and the cars will be fired down the track. Okay, now what I remember is so much pressure when you have the teams around me and I'll be announcing to all the mums, family, everyone there at the factory or, or wherever the location was, the pressure on the person pulling that trigger. So that's going to be quite a relief for the teams, you'd imagine? Yes, yeah, definitely. There's no, no pressure on one person <laughs> of a team. It's... Yeah, just a little bit easier for them. And, and in terms of how long the race will take, uh, how long can we expect for that? So probably for the between 1.2 and 1.5 best teams going under okay. and class hopefully between one and one 
second barrier broken. Okay, now how important is the, uh, breaking that one second barrier? It, does it happen all the time? It does all the time. It only happens a handful of times, so it'll be a really big achievement for the teams to make that happen. I'm mic'd up. You hear some huge whooping and celebrations, or maybe even bang. That is because a second barrier. Uh, so are we expecting the races to be close today? Yes, they will be very close. Second, um, so they will they will give us some very close results, some very accurate results of the speeds of the car. Mm. We also have a gate on the uh, sector two gate, basically. Mm. Uh, so there will be find out the launch phase as well as the cruise phase of the cars. Yeah, so it's a twenty meter track. And how far is that gate sector two? Is it about? It's six meters, I believe. Okay, all right. And then obviously with that, we'll be able to have some further analysis by by yourself and Sophie. Hopefully. Yes, yeah. yes we can look at <laughs> look at the data and see what it says. Okay, uh, and and this is where it's a little bit mind boggling. There's no uh, east. There's no no because no one's here. So how do the points work? Get a little bit complex. So normally there's two. 20 points, so 110 of those are for the reaction racing and the are for the time trial. So this time, car A and 110 points for car B. Mm. So uh, if you are the first place, then you'll get 110 points, second, 105, uh, 110, mm. uh, yeah, and so on, all the way down until we, after the third place, it'll be 120% of the third fastest time. Okay, don't worry, I've got the Lenovo laptop here, it's got a calculator on it, if we need it, uh, which I'm we, hoping. We can sort it. <laughs> Calibrating scoring system, love it. Complicated, very fair. Now, our tech team uh, have set up cameras all around the track, which will give us a Then afterwards, uh, you will be able to see, hopefully, replays powered by Lenovo is where we can do some Okay, now, there have been some regionals that have taken place to get us to this set of the nationals. So, it's been a brilliant season for F1. 261 teams competed a couple of regional finals. This all happened way in January and February. So let's have a little recap for everyone. So I was back up to speed. F1 in schools in 2020 saw 12 final venues host 261 competing teams across 1,044 thrilling head-to-head -head races, all delivered by an F1 in schools team who covered 3,255 miles all the way around the UK. The journey started in the northwest in Bolton on the 9th of January, where we saw Sigma Racing, Nebula Racing, CH Speed, Apollo Racing, and Skylark progress to the UK national finals. A short hop down the M6. To make UK Technology Hub, where on the 15th of January, the Central England Regional Final saw Spiritus 6, Aspire 6, Peacock Power and DT Equals winning through to the National Finals. Across into the capital on the 29th of January, London North was hosted at Harlow College. Here, IQ, Eclipse, Cassiopeia and the Dragonettes progressed through to the UK National Finals. The team headed out east on the 31st of January, Sprouston Community Academy hosted the East Anglia Regional Final, where Nova Racing, Aquila Racing and Apex Racing took the honours. Of the A1 and the North East Regional Final was held on the 5th of February at Nissan Motor Manufacturing in Sunderland. Here we saw Suffragettes, Aero, SBA Avidity Racing, Optimum Racing, Slide Sports Entity and Eclipse making it through to the UK National Finals. The chairman of F1 in Schools, Mr Andrew Denford himself, sadly didn't make it through to the podium, but took home top honours in the seniors class. The show then went south, all the way south, to South Wales. On the 6th of February, Cardiff City Stadium hosted the South Wales Regional, where Nemesis Inferno taking the three steps on the podium. Through the valleys into the coast of North Wales now, where the venue Cymru hosted the North Wales Regional Final. Here, Accelerate, Team Quantum and Rapides joined the lineup for this year's UK National Finals. All the way back down south and to London South. On the 14th of February, F1 in Schools celebrated Valentine's Day with the biggest regional final of the season. Here we saw Emirates, Voyager, Vision, Britannia Red and Electron making it through to the UK National Finals. Never afraid of a drive, the team headed north, all the way north, north of the border into Scotland. And on the 21st of February, the home of Accelerate's 2018 world finalist Lithgow Academy hosted the Scotland Regional Final. 
Here we saw Dynamic Racing, Enhanced Racing, Peregrine Racing, Genesis and Phoenix Racing all making it through to the UK National Finals. Just two legs left to go on our quest and the 26th of February 2020, a brand new venue, Bath and Bristol Science Park, and a fantastic one it was too. Here we saw Energia, Odyssey Racing, Momentum and Valhalla Racing taking the honours. The last step on the regional finals journey this year took us to the East Midlands and to Roundhouse Derby College where 14 entry class teams saw it out for the honours to become not this year's national finalists, but the entry class regional champions. Who knows, maybe next year one of those will become a UK national champion too. What a year it's been and what an incredible competition we have in store. Good luck to all the teams and may the most deserving team win. Indeed. Uh, I love the enthusiasm of Mark's videos. It felt like I was there back at the regionals. The long drives up to Scotland, it was brilliant. There was lo so much energy oh, there. Loads of energy. Yeah, and nerve-wracking to be at the regionals, but then that to get through to the finals, right? Yes, yeah, massively. Mm. Even though the regionals are nerve-wracking, when you get through, it's like, yes. all my hard work has paid off. Okay, well, listen, uh, don't forget, if you are watching right now and that nerves are jangling, then don't forget uh, to send us a message on the socials at F1 in Schools UK. Right, so now, uh, let's have a look. We know about the competition classes, uh, we know about racing procedure, and we know about the regional finals to get us to this point right now. It's time to take a look at the all-important racing schedule for today. Kickstarting at about 10 a.m. We'll go straight into it. We'll start with the development class. Uh, we have got, first up, uh, Rapides, who are going to be an all-Welsh matchup here against Dino Go, the College of Merthyr Tiville, and Iskol David Hughes there in lane one. So that's a very exciting race to kickstart things. Then we'll head to the Blackout, uh, St John's College Cardiff from Wales, and then they'll be taking on Aero from Whitley Bay High School. So that's two races back-to-back -back in the development class. Yes, two back-to-back, -back, and then we move on to the professional class. So at 16 minutes past 10, we have Optimum Racing from Whitley Bay High School, who will be taking on Momentum Racing from Exeter School. And then following that, there will be Skylark from the Nelson Tomlinson School, on Phoenix Racing from Moneyfeath High School. Yeah, indeed. I love the fact, uh, I wanna put just a, a slight, like in light pencil, these timings. Uh, <laughs> Roughly about 10.39, we have CH Speed from Cheadle uh, Home School uh, versus Emma and Langton School for Boys, an all-England uh, matchup. And roughly, Energy from Exeter School, Enhanced Racing by McBell and H, I love that name, uh, Linlithgow. And, and then, there, uh, if there's a graphic missing, there isn't. It is just one uh, racing on its own, and that is the them a boys school best of luck to everyone then but that is it that's more race there's on to vision but may school who will be taking on cassiopeia from trinity catholic high school and just after that about 10 past 11 we'll have sba avidity racing from scarborough utc who will be against Electron from St. Olaf's Grammar School. Yes, uh, then moving on back to the development class. Uh, we un uh, For a second there, I wondered the name, but yeah, Odyssey Racing from uh, Colton Grammar School. I'm very excited about them uh, racing high school. That is an all Scotland matchup. Ooh, lots of uh, England, yeah. England, Scotland, <laughs> Scotland matches up today. Definitely some rivalry stuff. Yes, so then we move on with some more class racing. Next race. Sprout Community Academy at Nemesis Inferno from Pencourt School. Professional class races from Queen Elizabeth Grammar School against Akiva High School. Perfect. Uh, I'm loving the, the design of racing, just for the amazing yellow colour they have. Uh, look out for that. At 12 18, the Suffragettes from Whitley Bay High School will be racing. And up there, then roughly around half of Spirit Bab Lake School taking on IQ of London. And that is it for the development class at that point. Then May School, who will be taking on. And go? then just staff just before quarter one, we have Genesis from Linlith taking on Aspire Six. Who's high school of the day? Yeah, uh, six. 
racing as well. So there you go. That is the schedule. Uh, timings are rough, but that is the order for today. There are a few familiar that I know I'm talking about uh, again from that list. Now, Georgina, Sophie, I'll oh, look at some of the vehicles and their design. Are there any stand out to you in particular, Georgina, to kickstart things? Yes, so there's quite a few intricate designs and so these is Blackout. Uh, so this comes with a very intricate front wing, so it'll be interesting to see how that one fares up. And they also have some interesting to see what the use is. Yeah, what speeds will we track? That'll be race two. Uh, race three, Sophie, uh, one caught your eye. They have a rather cool rear up behind the wheels. We've nicknamed it the waffle. <laughs> a bit of a, a sort of a waffle shape at the back, and what that is, a grid behind it, four by four grid. That does is actually laminar straight flow in every direction. So yeah, we could speed of the car. <laughs> right now. Um, the, speed of the car. The aerospace engineer yes. uh, is never far <laughs> away. Uh, but interesting enough, that waffle, do, do, do you think if you've looked at it and there's no way of knowing on the track, do you think it uh, make it faster? If you were to predict at the moment? At the moment, I'm really not sure, in all honesty. Um, we, we do use the... Uh, we put things like in your tap in your sink has, has one of these lattices to try and make the water flow straight. So who knows? Hopefully it, it could keep it on the street. We'll wait for race. Thank you very much, Sophie. Uh, also, uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, yes. one of the British uh, rockets uh, to be uh, launched 1957. But that's not actually the name reason why they've chosen it. But I'll tell you a little bit about that later on. But what stood up for you in this design? So for Skylark, when uh, we uh, looked at the car, we picked it up and we saw the very, very smooth wheels that they have. And they also have some very good bearings inside that seem to spin for ages uh, so it'll be interesting to see how much that will make to their time yeah development class have a standard wheels uh, that they have but professional you can do what you yes, intrigued you by that smoothness yes, of, of the wheels can change whatever wheel you want so there's another one we're going to talk about later which has got some very interesting wheel designs okay keep an eye on that one that's race four uh, back to you sophie in race seven in the development class voyager the fulham boys school um they only have one car actually uh, competing today but it, but it stood out for you why it did yes um and the main reason they stood out for me is actually because of the testing they've gone through so most of our um, entries have done an element of cfd or computational fluid dynamics which is all computational based so the theory so what should happen when the when the when the cars uh, go down the track? However, what these guys also did is they took um, the physical testing. So they actually did a physical test to see whether what they'd calculated actually happened in real life. And that's something that's really important in engineering, in particular, is although we can predict what's going to happen, we don't know until we actually do it. So it will be interesting to see whether their results they got from their physical tests and their computational fluid dynamics or CFD actually line up. Yeah, indeed. And obviously we know that the judges have looked at all of that work and, and points have been accrued. So down to the race now. Uh, what about dynamic racing? Uh, race 11 uh, today, they stood up for you as well, Sophie. Yes, um, not just because of the bright colours, <laughs> you know, which I like a bright car, um, but uh, particularly from their sort of design of their rear wing. So they actually tested two different designs of the similar sort of wing, which is that curved sort of horn shape on each side and they, they t um, tested it both ways so both concave and convex um, to see which w which would be better and it sort of see the sides of that rear wing and seen how um, it improves so we'll see whether it makes a difference in the car in the way that they chose. Definitely now I mentioned it earlier Aquila Racing from Aylsham High School going with a canary yellow all the way in Norwich love the colour uh, but what stood out for you in their design? Yes so this one is actually a really good example of something called biomimicry. So biomimicry is essentially replicating the natural world in the engineering or techn technology world. So um, for this instance, they actually took the beak of an eagle, um, which is probably what inspired the yellow colour um, to sort of match that eagle's um, beak. And that's what's caused this ridge down the middle here um, to sort of see whether that gives it an aerodynamic edge. Um, and it's something we use a lot in engineering is to understand how the natural world, how that is sort of aerodynamically sound and sort of other things that we can replicate to improve our designs here. And that's what they've done here. Oh, perfect. All right. OK. So and finally, uh, thank you very much, Sophie. Um, 
Georgina, it stood out for you, Slide Sports Entity, why there's a little bit of sort of, you know the team members, is that right? We uh, did compete against one of the team members a few years ago. Uh, so yeah, this car has very interesting wheels. So as you may just be able to make out on the photo, they made their wheel centers out of foam. So they've manufactured them out of foam and then put a plastic surrounding around that as the actual wheel. So that's a very different design. Uh, 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 tether line uh, guides are also made of a yeah, rather than the usual plastic that most teams opt for. Yeah, okay. Now, obviously, Sophie and George have nothing to do with the judging part. It's just what they uh, in the designs and the cars and the vehicles uh, when they were, the excitement on their faces when they were able to look through all of the boxes and, and, and go through. Real design excitement. Um, what do you expect then from that car then with those different wheels? Fast? Maybe the fastest with those particular wheel design? Maybe the fastest, maybe not. It will be interesting to see, interesting to see how they fare up. Oh, Georgina sitting on the fence. Okay, love it. Let's uh, get to the racing very shortly. Before we do that, uh, as Andrew mentioned earlier today, it wouldn't be possible without our amazing programme sponsors and partners. So I'd like to say a thank you now, firstly, to Denford. As mentioned earlier, uh, we are here at the Denford factory in West Yorkshire. For over 70 years, Denford have striven to bring together the very best CAD, CAM and CNC manufacturing solutions for education and training. The skills F1 in schools teams learn on a Denford machine are transferable to CNC machines used throughout engineering and manufacturing industry. So thank you to Denford. Uh, also to Lenovo, you will see the laptops on our desk here. They are supporting F1 in schools uh, as it aligns with their aim to encourage uh, um, entrepreneurialism uh, and create an environment where people's talents can be challenged and their efforts recognized and rewarded. They are supporting us today with laptops and a high performance mobile workstation to power the replays of the races. Those are gonna be very exciting those replays we're going to be watching them on repeat um, also a massive thank you to Autodesk uh, their mission is to build software tools to enable people to experience their ideas before they are real they support our teams by providing free access for educational institutions uh, to their software tools to design their cars so thank you to them uh, also the Institution of Engineering and Technology the IET inspire inform and influence the global engineering community to engineer a better world. As a, a diverse home across engineering and technology, they share knowledge that helps make better sense of the world in order to solve the challenges that matter. Uh, and finally, a thank you to Project Management Institute Educational Foundation. They enable youth to realize their potential and transform lives through project management. Young people are tomorrow's global leaders. Uh, sentiment I definitely agree with. So thank you very much to all of the partners and sponsors. So it leaves me just to let you know that the awards will be taking place at 2.30 this afternoon. So you can subscribe as you're watching on YouTube right now uh, to make sure you do not miss that. Uh, we'll have the award show. There are 27 awards to hand out to our teams, recognizing the effort that the teams have put in to get where they are today. Uh, we also have invitations to the F1 in Schools World Finals for our development class national champions and in the professional class country champions and podium winners. That's all on the way. Plus, the professional class national champions will also be custodians of this magnificent, it is a gorgeous trophy. It is an amazing trophy. It's so good, we were told we mustn't touch it at any point throughout the show, which I feel that I'm gonna really struggle with. But yes, that trophy will be heading to you uh, for the next year. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, as I say, so you don't miss out on the awards. Listen, I think we have all kept you waiting uh, long enough it is time to go racing, and we will be kickstarting uh, on the development class with Rapides from Iskal David Hughes School, uh, and they will be taking on Dino Go, the college Merthyr Tivill. Now, this matchup class it always feels a bit unfair that someone has to race, so we'll be on them. Um, now, obviously, Rapides and every team that has competed have had uh, difficulty over the last six months, and reading from Rapides, uh, it's been quite challenging for them as a team. Uh, they haven't been able to get together and work side by side in school, so it's been a lot of online stuff. But you're familiar with that at university at the moment? Yes, yes, no, it's all the same at university. There are a few things happening in person, but there's quite a lot online as well. It says here that um, uh, obviously there's been difficulties and, and obviously having to be. So a lot of uh, sort of information and, and, and organisation falls on the team manager. What was your role in the teams? Uh, so I was the manufacturing engineer in my team. So I was responsible for CNC and 
and 3D printing the car, okay. which was some exciting. And then also working alongside the design engineer and of course the rest of the team to make sure that everything could happen. Yeah, indeed. So when you look at these uh, stats and, and this data that we have here, Rapid Airs, when you notice just on the raw data, what, what are you noticing about the cars? And obviously you've got Dynago on the right there. Uh, yeah, so you can obviously see the cars are... Uh, Massive weight difference, yeah, I'm noticing quite, immediately. Quite a large weight difference with these two, but the uh, length of Dynago has uh, aims to be at their lowest minimum length, which was, will be interesting to see how that fares up. Um, and then the height is also fairly similar, so it'll be interesting to see how close they are. Okay, now I can tell you the name of the car uh, on your right side of your screen, Dynago, is called, of course, Veloci Raptor. Uh, you see, because they've used the dyno, uh, you're happy with that. I'm happy with that. I think that's a great name for it's, a car. It is a great name for a car. <laughs> um, they are very excited what they're looking forward to most. Uh, we also look forward to showing how STEM can be fun at a national level. That's it, something they wanted to go to. Hopefully, uh, we'll be able to chat to them on Zoom. Um, so let's go, first of all, uh, Rapidez, we'll chat to them in just one second. They're in a waiting room at the moment um, and we'll be able to find, there they are. Uh, good morning, guys. Uh, great to see you all. Um, let me come to Abby, first of all, if you unmute yourself so we can chat to you. Uh, a very difficult period. Hi. Good to see you. Um, you seem morning. happy, smiley. Are there any nerves? Yeah, I'm pretty nervous because we haven't had the proper chance to see you. We went to have it tested to race, so we have no idea if it's going to be quick or Hoping it would be quick. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, Georgina, you notice, you, you, like in the setup of their car, um, it's going against one that you said is the same height, but what do you expect their car to do? I think their cars will be uh, quite fast, hopefully quite close as well. Um, there's some there's really intricate parts on their car and some good good wing designs, which will be which will be good to good on their car, hopefully give them a fast time. Yeah, now I have noticed, uh, I do happen to be a football fan, and I know that Hugh obviously has got Everton curtains on. You will be part of the award ceremony at half past two. You won't be watching your football team play, will you, Hugh? Well, I'm muting Yeah, I'll be here, but, you know... I'll be there from half past three watching. <laughs> <laughs> OK, fair enough, Hugh. Um, listen, I've got to ask, what was your involvement in the team? Uh, so I was the finance manager, so, of course, it was difficult to keep track of how we spend our money and making sure we didn't go over the money we were given by the sponsors. Yeah, and, and I noticed from reading everyone's team pack, how easy was it to get that sponsorship? Uh, it was quite difficult, but luckily we had a few uh, very, uh, quite a lot of people that were giving us a lot of money from uh, for because they were very supportive. Oh, well, well, that's perfect. Well, listen, Hugh, congratulations for getting this far and to the rest of the team. Sorry we didn't get a chance to chat to everyone. Best of luck. All those smiles I hope to see at the end of the race as well. Uh, let's now chat to Dino Go, uh, the college, Merthyr, uh, and there they are looking resplendent. Look at the smiles on their faces. I want to come to the team. Oh, look at Gabriel. There is a suit jacket on. Gabriel, I have to talk to you. First of all, how are you managing to make that hair stand perfectly like that, Gabriel? Oh, I'm just doing whatever I can. Hair gel, <laughs> hairspray, got to keep it up. Got to keep it looking fresh. I'd love to see it. What was your uh, involvement in the team, Gabriel? Um, I was the engineering director, so I worked alongside uh, Jim, who designed the car, to do the engineering portfolios and help him alongside that. Okay, perfect. I see there, Jim, down in the bottom uh, part of the screen. Um, we noticed a, a heavier car. What was your... We wanted to sort of know what the theory behind that was. Uh, sorry, can you repeat that? Uh, what was the theory, Jim, uh, behind going for a heavier car and, and sort of a shorter, wasn't it, as well? Yeah, slightly shorter, slightly heavier. Um, well, I don't think I wanted to get it that uh, heavy to begin with. We had a few issues with CAD at the start. Uh, this is my first year doing this, and I never had any experience with CAD before this, so I had to learn it from scratch. But uh, at the start, the car was also too short so i also had to try and think of something to come up think of something to uh fix that so i tried to get it to the minimum length possible yeah hopefully, so hopefully the under. Uh, weight of the car might help the momentum with it in the second phase of the track though yeah definitely and i love the fact uh, yes uh, jim that you, obviously everyone you're learning you're, you're pushing yourself you don't know everything by heart but you're having to learn on the job so congratulations for getting this far uh do you think uh that you potentially are going to be the fastest car i'll ask that final question because we're about to go to the race um 
I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we're the fastest car. <laughs> All right, perfect. Well, let's head to the track. Great to chat to you guys. Uh, so we've got Rapides in lane one, and then we have, uh, of course, Dino Go in lane two. So let's get down to the track. There we go, just watching the cars, they're lined up on the track. And here we go then. Um, so uh, you're looking there. It's great to hear though, with obviously that learning CAD, it's not easy, but you learn it, you, 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 get, you get better at it and you improve. And then next time you're sort of like, yeah, I do want to do it next year. I want to compete again and improve. Yeah, so for these teams, because they're in the development class, they'll move on to the professional class. Uh, and hopefully the CAD skills that they've learned will mean that they can create an even better, even stronger car. Yeah, and obviously these guys uh, on the left table you're seeing on the left-hand side of track two, uh, meeting up new people was challenging at first for all of us, but the project has definitely brought us up closer together. So there you go, we found out, let's get to the race. Well, there you have it then, uh, Dino Go. Uh, faster on the split there, the 0 0.322, but actually uh, it's rapid as uh, winning that race there. What do you make from those numbers? The cruising speed, 14.8 meters per second. Yes, yeah, so it looks as though uh, Dino Go has had the faster first, first sector, um, but then Rapides has uh, managed to sprint through and finish off so uh, slightly faster. So almost 15 metres per second. We're watching the replay there, uh, which is about 54 kilometres per hour, 33.6 miles per hour. They're, they'll be happy with that. But obviously, um, what do you expect to have it the same pretty much again? Would anything you notice uh, from maybe uh, Dino Go's car there? Uh, so I think the, both teams' cars were quite uh, identical for car A and car B. Mm. Uh, so hopefully we might get similar results there. But then again, if they're on a different lane, it might, uh, might also affect it. Yeah, um, so you obviously experienced standing there waiting to see what happens uh, with your vehicle. You've done all that work and then it comes down to this. At least you can't say someone in the team member didn't uh, set <laughs> off the trigger in time and their reactions were a little bit slow. So this is, you know, very this fair. This is all on the cars and all on all of the team work together. Okay, all right. Well, we are getting lined up, ready on the track uh, to go for part two of race one. Best of luck. Again, an improvement there from Dino Go, but again, Rapid Air is 15.2 meters per second, even faster there, uh, which is great. Again, up to about 34 miles per hour. Uh, you expected that pretty much, but also winning in the split as well. Yes, yes, so some very fast times there. 1.432 for Rapid Air is a really good, strong time. Um, and then Dino Go will also, that time will, could also keep them up in the points. Yeah. I, I feel like with that, obviously, the, the slowing down there, the, the vehicle goes straight into that cushioning uh, to make sure it <laughs> stops. Uh, but yes, uh, great stuff. Well, listen, um, we'll obviously go, uh, we can see uh, Dino Go there. Uh, are we happy with that Dino Go? Is that what you expected? Uh, potentially, Gabriel, is that what you expected to happen? Um, I think it's not what we expected to happen. We were, maybe we'd come in, uh, but it's our first year, we're hoping you know, just try next year and hopefully improve a lot more. Yeah, definitely. And who was the, the manager? I forgot to ask, Gabriel. Who was the manager of your team? Um, that'd be Robin. Uh, uh, hey, good morning to you, manager. Happy with that? What will you say to, the, to the, the team after this? Words of encouragement, let's come back stronger next year? Uh, yeah. Yeah, going back to Gabriel's point, obviously it's our first year, so... Uh, considering all the factors uh, that, you know, uh, came into play, I'm, you know, uh, sort of happy with uh, where we are. So on to next year. Yeah. And uh, thank you very much for being the first team uh, to compete as well. And also, I believe your acting skills. I don't know who was in the dino costume in your video that I saw of you. Were you being chased? I, I'm, I'm sure I quite, I'm quite sure who was uh, in the acting there. Yeah, so I was the one running away and uh, Rob, he was in the dinosaur suit for that one. Okay, perfect. Great job, Rob. There.
Congratulations. Uh, we'll find out where that uh, puts you in terms of leaderboard as we go out through the day. But Rapides, congratulations to them. They're, you know, the fast car, 1.432. I know that was for the second race, but that, they'll be happy with that. Yes, I'm uh, sure they definitely will be. It's a good fast time. We'll take them straight to the top of the leaderboard straight away. But who knows if we'll have any cars faster later on. Yeah, and obviously development classes will be watching. Um, as we'll be heading uh, very shortly to watch uh, Blackout uh, take on Aero from Whitley Bay High School. Um, yeah, Rapides, I, I know that here, um, congratulations, Hugh. You're getting closer to uh, missing the football match, which I'm very happy to hear about, actually, Hugh. Yeah, I think we've done really well, considering the challenges we've had with the pandemic, I think. I'm very proud. Yeah, definitely. So, Abby, obviously team manager, you've had to deal with everyone over the last five months, organising them, They're chatting to you on Microsoft Teams. Uh, you must be very happy so far with that. Yeah, I am. I'm really happy that I won the first race and it was very fast and I'm glad our improvements we made from the regional to development paid off. Yeah, definitely. What sort of things did you actually improve from regionals to the nationals? So we made like the side, we wanted the air to flow over the wheels and straight onto the side pods so it wouldn't like in, get hit, like hit anything in the wind or anything. And then we like raised the side, bulb and side pods and like moved the weight around so it flew over, it made it a bit longer and things. Well, perfect. It seems to have worked uh, there. I'm going to ask Sophie, did you notice anything particularly on the track side there between the two cars? I think for me it was the start, just straight away they just got got out quick and the, uh, I think that's down to a little less resistance really at the end of the day so yeah congratulations good shot good oh, shot well done indeed all right then so there you go Rapides congratulations we might be speaking to you later on or we definitely might be seeing them later on at the award ceremony later on today at half past two so uh, one race done and dusted everything is getting sorted on the track now as we welcome uh, from the development class blackout at St John's College Cardiff they'll be taking on Aero Whitley Bay High School so with these ones, uh, Blackout, uh, very excited. Uh, and I love the name, Blackout. Blackout. They say, we're going to eclipse our opposition. So I see what they've done there with the name, going for a full uh, Blackout uh, there. Yes, and this is one of our ones to watch as well. Yeah, so w again, just to remind everybody, w what is it that you liked about the, the makeup? Was it the two front and back? Yeah, the, so the front and the rear, the rear wing. So the front wing was quite intricate, had quite a lot of... Uh, different ideas to it to hopefully direct the air where they want to send it and then the rear wing also had two lips at the side which will stop the air from dropping off and mm. um, so hopefully allow it to go in a straight line straight down the track. Perfect and they mentioned obviously the team history because a lot of teams uh, they've, they've competed uh, here we are we're seeing that the two logos up there blackout on the left uh, taking on Aero. Um, interesting enough that they, they, they were all in the separate entry class teams but merged in development and then the team manager was in the original blackout and they won the regionals. This year we won in-house regionals. So there's a pedigree there. You learn and you're now able to take an idea and extend it. Um, but it, what sort of things do you notice from the data here? So looking at the data here we've got two roughly the same weight so 64.2 for blackout and 65.6 for aero, so some quite close uh, race weights. Uh, they're roughly the same height, so maybe that will have an impact as well. Um, the colours, who knows, <laughs> might, might have an impact on track. <laughs> Definitely. Um, but yeah, there's some good cars, some good bits on the aero one as well, uh, with keeping to the red, the red theme. Yeah. Uh, but well, we'll see. Oh, um, well, Aero, um, combining aerodynamics and our unique branding and colour scheme. And uh, that's where uh, they get the name from. Uh, name of car is DPN20. Um, and I believe that actually Blackout are with us now. Ah, oh, fantastic. All in one room, waving as well. Uh, <laughs> and look at the team kit. Oh, I love the team kit. Well, good morning uh, to you all. Uh, how are you feeling about the regionals and then coming to the nationals? Uh, talk to us about your process and, and what you've enjoyed. Um, well, at regionals, we obviously had a really good experience. Well, obviously it's really different because of the current experience, like current times and circumstances. Obviously more tech involved, less physical meetings. It was it was actually really fun. I think it developed us more as a team. It showed like how strong our bonds are through, like throughout the team. It showed how much we can work even when circumstances are not on our side. 
Yeah, definitely. Well, it's definitely shown that. I mean, diversity, the way you've dealt with it. Um, it was also, reading your notes, raising money. You put two exclamation marks. You found that the most difficult part, sponsorship. Uh, how did you overcome it? Well, I mean, for sponsorship, basically, our sponsorship portfolio we sent to every company we could find. I think it was over 500 companies we sent our sponsorship proposal to, so that uh, even though the probability that we actually get money is very low, the more companies you send it to, the more chance you have. And we ended up getting some pretty big sponsors, which managed to fund all our um, death class endeavors. And we actually have quite a bit left over as well. Oh, that, that is great to hear. I, I even see on the notes here, Georgine, it says triple. They managed to raise over triple of the Nationals' budget. So uh, you, finding a problem and then, and then fixing it and then doing better. And then even doing better. <laughs> Potentially keep that for next year to uh, progress you onto the professional class. Is that, is that the option, Blackout? If, if it goes well today, and will you be coming back for the professional? Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, you love to see it. Well, listen, best of luck, Blackout. We'll have to talk uh, to the other team, uh, Aero, that you're going up against there. Uh, but that's brilliant to hear, Georgina, that you've got a team that having some sort of setbacks and, and but then overcoming it and then seeing and the then joy. And to go further. <laughs> yeah, for the yes. professional class. All right, um, well, as we say, uh, best of luck to Blackout. Uh, they'll be in lane one. They're taking on Aero from Whitley Bay High School, uh, who will be joining us uh, very shortly. Um, and here's the interesting thing about Aero. Uh, there they are. Guys, good morning to you. All in team kit. We love to see that. A little wave. Charlie didn't want to wave. Uh, there we go, a reluctant hand up. Uh, listen, Charlie, I'll come to you then because you seem most reluctant. Um, good morning to you. How do you feel about going into um, getting on the track and racing? Um, I'm really excited for today. Um, hope, hopefully we're going to win. Indeed. Um, now, uh, now uh, hopefully you do win uh, and set the fastest time. You, it says here, you've all strongly considered an engineering degree or degree around a job we do, like graphic designs, uh, marketing. Uh, I'll ask you, Joseph, is that something that, that has inspired you, maybe? Uh, yeah, definitely. I think the, the opportunities that this sort of competition has brought has definitely been a motive, uh, motive for us to continue through some of the challenges that we've had and try and make it to a uh, national competition. Oh, well, congratulations again for getting here. It's time to go down to the track. So there you go. Uh, you've met Blackout and Aero. Let's go down trackside. Best of luck to both teams. Let's put their cars through their paces. Wow. They're getting the split. Uh, finish time of 1.391 cruising speed of 14.1 so not the fastest cruise speed actually that was uh, blackout there yeah so blackout taking uh no uh, that'll be aero taking that oh, aero today, taking. i believe yeah. um so yeah a very close race with a hundredth of a second between the two of the teams so that's a very close one. We can see uh, Dennis is quite quite happy with that score. <laughs> yeah indeed there was a sort of clapping as well uh happy with that Dennis yeah <laughs> okay. Do you think there's a possibility uh, of maybe going a little bit faster in a second run here? Um, I think that was quite fast for our car, but possibly a little bit faster. Okay. Did you manage to do any testing uh, of the vehicle before before you went to regionals and say the nationals here? Yeah, we did do some testing of the car at Nissan before lockdown, but mainly it was like virtual. Okay. Testing. All right, well, listen, I tell you what, a great uh, way to start. Uh, so we're ready at the track. Best of luck to Blackout. See if you can uh, post an even faster time and, and, and same for Aero. So let's go trackside and let's watch the action. But they seemed happy with that. D DPN20, the name of the car for Aero. Might um, be Iteration 20. Yes. Might have created tw <laughs> 20 different designs. Really, and that's why they've got the number 20. So uh, I am then, just to double check, in lane one, we're looking at blackout uh, there. Black with the orange uh, back wheel there. We're just lining up uh, the cars to make sure everything is all set up. And in red is Aero. Here we go then. So you know what to watch for. Very exciting stuff. Here we go.
So there you go. Aero winning that one. 1.425 there. Um, that is very fast indeed. And Blackout, I'm not quite sure compared to the, the first run they had of 1.536, but both seemed sort of very close, neck and neck there. What, what do you think was the, the sort of difference? Uh, I think, yeah, they were just very close teams. I suppose the cars had uh, some quite similar weights, uh, so that would make them fly down the track at roughly the same time. Uh, but looking at the cruise speed for Aero, 14.8 metres per second, so that's a very fast cruise speed. Yeah, uh, very happy with that. Uh, blackout, uh, listen, uh, not the fastest car on the track, but still uh, very fast indeed. A team manager. Uh, yeah, we did okay, but as as the circumstances, manufacturing of the car was the hardest part because obviously you couldn't be there, it's a bit disorganised. So printing letters down a little bit, painting was really hard, but you know, we did okay for like what we had. We, we didn't get a lot, but we did what we could with what we had. So I'm still quite happy, we still have it. Good. It sounds, like you, uh, it sounds like you're having to prove that you're happy. I think you should be very happy with everything that's happened over the last five months and <laughs> the fact that you know you want to come back uh, for the professional class as well. So you know what lessons you've learned from that. And that's really important, isn't it, Georgina, to learn from that to then go forward? Yes, yeah, so learning the lessons from everything, including your, all your teamwork and all the communication skills that you learned with everyone, especially during this time, it'll mean that hopefully you'll be even stronger if you come back next year. Indeed, and I love the fact that you have uh, designed your own blackout face mask. They are very cool indeed. <laughs> uh, well, listen, uh, hopefully we'll be seeing you later on at the awards. Best of luck, lovely to meet you all this morning at Blackout. Um, and Aero, uh, congratulations to you guys. Uh, Charlie, you moved on the screen, you've moved around, but I like it. Uh, you've got to be happy with that. Uh, yeah, I'm great. A great um, win. Yeah, and and I love the fact. I don't know if you've noticed this, Georgina. That is two TV screens in the background for Charlie. There is no mucking around. If one goes down, he's always got the other one uh, ready. Uh, Joseph, uh, Noah, Dennis, uh, who was the team manager out of you guys? Um, no, I, I was. So I've managed our team for the last two or so years, and we've done well together. Yeah. You, so using your experience, um, are you happy with that time, Noah? Sorry? Uh, are, are you happy with that time? Team manager, you, you send out the message to everyone. You're happy with that Definitely. time? Ah, oh, brilliant. Well, listen, uh, Aero, they've gone. They've disappointed. We knew that would happen at some point, uh, the tech issues. But most importantly, Aero are very happy with the time they set. And I think a good start there for the development class. And now we'll yes, be moving definitely. on to the professional class. This is where we get to see all of those extra tinkering, but especially with the wheels. Yes, yeah, so especially with the wheels and also with the virtual cargo rather than the no-go zone. Uh, so it gives the teams just a little bit more freedom with their uh, aerodynamic movements and everything they want to do with the car. Yes, and uh, I'm going to come to because obviously uh, in the expert corner, uh, Optimum Racing is that you highlighted earlier. We're going straight there to that race now. Uh, and just to remind you, the design at the, uh, the rear, the, the, the waffle, we're calling it the waffle. Yeah, no, it was the waffle, the one that was going to hopefully get some laminar flow, so some straight directional flow coming out the back over the wheel or past the wheel. So hopefully, which we'll see, it's been a professional class. It could be quite a quite a race. Yeah, it could be indeed. Will we break that one second marker? Uh, interesting enough to explain the team name for Optimum Racing. It all started in 2017 when Amy was looking up cinnamon for the best in the thesaurus. The team was then subsequently a coin toss between uh, Optimum Racing and Excalibur Racing. I don't need to tell you which coin uh, won there because it's Optimum Racing, but two good names. Uh, what do you notice about their setup uh, and the data there then? Uh, yes, yeah, so there's some, lots of interesting data. So some very similar between car A and car B for Optimum Racing, which is probably quite difficult to achieve with their complex design. And then looking at Momentum Racing, nice, really strong blue car, which has got a really nice finish on it, looking at the car in, in person. Uh, they're both very similar weights, uh, so that will be interesting down the track. And the wheelbase of Momentum Racing, 105 millimetres, is very, very accurate. Yeah, I, I can see in the 
distance here, uh, Oscar is uh, hurrying along to get the professional class cars on the track. So I'm watching constantly. As soon as we can get there, uh, we will uh, do so. Um, interesting enough, uh, with Momentum from Exeter School, uh, they've got that pedigree, though, because they've had some uh, experience through other um, uh, rounds in development as well as professional. And uh, there's been a whole rebranding, Momentum Racing. It used to be Momentum, but now it's Momentum Racing. Racing. So that, that team branding change can make all the difference, can't it? It, defi <laughs> it definitely could do. It will give them something to talk about in their, uh, in their business portfolio as well. Yeah. Uh, so it might come in there. And Optimum Racing, their team name of the car is Dinosaur. Uh, I want to know about this. Maddie, uh, that really did tickle you. Why the Dinosaur? Um, basically... One of the teachers that we were all taught um, was um, retired last year. Um, so we were like, let's just name it after him, because why not? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You've got to have a reason for something, and that is a perfect reason. Uh, uh, Maddie, what is your involvement in the team? Um, I'm the manufacturing engineer. So yeah, I just am involved with all the making of the car and stuff. Yeah, OK. Um, and uh, who was the team manager then, Maddie? Um, that was Neil. Neil, we've got to speak to Neil. Neil, there's a clock above your head, which means there's a man who is always running to time. That is what management is all about. Uh, what have you enjoyed most uh, through this whole process? Uh, I think it's been a great thing to get involved. If it's exciting, it's, it is stressful. Um, <laughs> my time's going, Bobby, why is this bit not here? Why is this there? Why is the car, why can we not test the car? Why haven't you checked that? Yeah. But it's been, it does get really exciting at the competition and the, the, uh, the run up to it when everything's going a bit hectic. It is indeed. Well, we, we know that. And Georgina's been explaining how hectic it, it does get at the Nationals. I love your Whitley Bay uh, print in the background. That looks very cool, Neil. Very calming, which I imagine all that stress, that can be quite calming. I want to ask uh, Amy, what's it like when Neil gets stressed? Slightly <laughs> but... <laughs> He's got the right intentions and <laughs> does all come together. Oh, brilliant. Well, that is good to hear. Amy, what, what, what was your role in this team? I was the graphic designer. OK. Oh, brilliant. Because I know uh, he is up in the top right of the screen. Uh, during sort of uh, lessons learned from COVID-19, uh, you've been reading a lot of race car engineering magazines. Uh, is that something you want to move into, Robbie? Absolutely, yeah. It's basically all I want to do, just do aerodynamics and F1 cars. So it's it's the perfect magazine for me to read because it's all about the stuff I want to do. Oh. It, it's so interesting. Oh, brilliant. Well, that's great to see that that, that passion is there. Uh, listen, best of luck, Optimum Racing. We're going to get to the track side. Uh, we are unable to chat to Momentum, but like I say, a whole rebranding. Biggest challenge for them was raising sponsorship. Uh, but they have here, they have managed it. We're going to go track side. So we have Optimum Racing uh, on the right of your screen, and we have Momentum Racing in blue on the left. Best of luck to both teams. Here we go. Ooh, some very fast cars there. <laughs> wow. Uh, not broken the one second, Barry, but 1.185 is very fast. Yes, it's a very, very fast car from momentum there. Um, it's, yeah, fastest time, obviously, so far for the professional class, uh, but hopefully we might see some more faster times later on. Do you know what? I get so nervous. I see the first red light and my heart starts beating faster, but, ooh, breakage ooh, I there. I think we can, yeah, just see the rear wing of Optimum Racing coming off. That is not going to be good for Neil. He is going to be stressing about that breakage. You can see on the screen that I can see at the moment. But yeah, we're watching that breakage. It, it looks like the it rear... Lo it looks like as soon as it hits the, uh, the brushes, it's just coming off. OK, uh, but luckily you won't have to race that car it again. It won't need to be raced again. And it's obviously past the finishing barrier, so it won't affect their time or their points at all. OK, that's good. Neil, uh, does that, that make you a little bit more relieved now? Yes, uh, we never actually got to test these designs on the track because uh, of obviously lockdown and we couldn't get to Nissan. We had some more visits booked in for like the original national date, but we couldn't then make them for all the restrictions that got added in. So it's not been tested. So we would have probably found that out had 
that being uh, had we had time to test it. Definitely, definitely. I want to ask, uh, Amy, design feature. Sophie, you noticed that the rear, that the, the, we call it the waffle. Uh, what, what was the, the is, is that the technical term we'd call for it, the waffle? Uh, no, there's a few different names. Depends on what you're using for, but generally a grate. A grate is generally what you call it. Okay, Amy, so the grate, uh, was that the design feature that was uh, sort of stood out for you, was prominent that you were really uh, sort of happy with? Well, it was mainly Robbie who designed the car, but we were really happy with that design feature as it really helped to channel the airflow over the back wheels of the car. Okay, all right. Well, listen, uh, you need to pick up some speed to get the fastest time as we go back to the track. So best of luck as we go down and that heart racing moment. Two red lights, three red lights, four red lights, five. There you go, uh, both cars slightly slower there, 1.205, momentum racing it, taking it. Seems to be slight movement. I believe a wheel may have come off yeah, as well. Yeah, there is, yes. it was last, <laughs> it was last. It still crossed the line though. It did, I uh, would need to check on the rules as to what part of the car has to cross it for the score to count though. Oh, uh, okay. But it's not as fast as their other time, I don't believe, so they'll still be able to keep that time on this leaderboard. Yeah, what did you notice from that, Sophie? The, the split time was very fast from optimum racing 0 0.448, but anything else down for you? And did, did that great work? I think it may have. Um, I think one of the things that it possibly could do potentially in the future, if you're going to do it again, is potentially move it slightly further forward. So rather than behind your wheels, thinking maybe before your wheels, and that might help with a bit of wobble. So as it's going down, it's going slightly side to side. Yes. And I think that's just your air coming in and it straightens afterwards, but maybe a bit further forward, it might have helped to keep it a bit straight beforehand. Okay, well, uh, expert advice there for you guys. Uh, are you happy with that optimum rate? Uh, it's not quite the result you wanted. I, I may even ask Robbie, what are you about that now with your design uh, dynamics that you're fascinated about? Well, for a start, I'll not build the car in a rush like the day before it needs to be stemmed. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> one of them came off. But I've, I've already started working on lock, over lockdown new designs for stuff with a, a new rear wing that solved a couple of really weird aerodynamic problems going on. They just come going all over the place. Um, so that should give us the, a bit more time. Shame we couldn't do it for this race, but we'll hopefully get through and be able to, to do it for the world, maybe. But I don't want to get my hopes too high. Oh, well, listen. Uh, it's great to have a goal and a dream in mind. Neil, thank you very much. Uh, and to Amy and to Maddie, thank you uh, for coming to join us today. Great to actually meet you and best of luck. Uh, fingers are crossed and hopefully uh, might be heading to the world. So there you go. Uh, a great, fun team. And it's brilliant to hear, uh, I say, uh, Sophie from Robbie, they're already thinking about future designs. That's great to see. It is great, yeah, and it's, it's nice to hear they're thinking about aerodynamics as a future career as an aerodynamicist myself. I always want to bring more in, so no, it's fantastic to hear that. Okay, and in terms of like a, a career, in terms of going from F1 in schools and maybe you get that uh, enthusiasm and that love and the passion, how easy and how challenging is it to, to get into a field of aerodynamics? So aerodynamics is a bit of a strange field because it's very mathsy based as well as very computational based. So there's all sorts of different ways you could get into aerodynamics um, and sort of into the car industry and aerospace and all those places. There's lots of different routes. Um, real advice, look at the sort of the companies that you're interested in, look at the things you're interested in. So if it's um, racing cars, for example, and that's what you look at, find it's out there and available to you because there's a lot of options, awful lot of options. Definitely. And join it, Georgina, that's what you're sort of currently doing now in product design, engineering. Hopefully going on into a future career in engineering. Perfect. Um, OK, so I want to test your brain uh, now for round four at uh, the Nelson Tomlinson School. You liked this design. Like obviously uh, on the left hand side of your screen they're taking on Phoenix Racing uh, this is the professional class to remind everyone what you liked about Skylark so Skylark had the smoothest wheels uh, on the track today so they were very smooth we'll have to ask the team in a minute how they made them um, and then they also had quite an interesting uh, front wing design as well to match the nose cone I imagine that's to be able to pass the regulations okay uh, but then looking at both the cars now, so Phoenix Racing is slightly heavier than Skylark, um, but 
has some excellent front wing features which might tilt the weight down at the front and help it send along the track a bit faster. Yeah, we did notice with Optima Racing, Sophie noticed it uh, as well, the, the sort of slight wobble on the track movement. Well, Skylark are joining us right now from Wigton. Uh, the, here is the team. Oh, Brody, the, you've got the full kit. Someone's into podcasting as well on the side. <laughs> good morning, Brody. Um, good morning. Yes, um, music. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Ah, that makes sense. Well, listen, uh, that's not to discredit anything from Becca's setup or Tim's or Matthew's at all. Uh, but uh, listen, uh, who should I come to? Who's the manager? Because I want to know, Georgina wants to know, how did you get those wheels so smooth? Uh, um, well, I'm the manager, but Matthew does all of their car stuff. Good delegation. I like that, Becca. <laughs> Matthew, tell me about these wheels. Our wheels we made with CCL. So for regionals, we made a set of wheels with carbon fiber uh, ring. But when we came to nationals, we thought because it wobbled such a lot of regionals, we moved and um, we spoke to CCL, who are our main sponsors, and we took a block sheet of plastic and machined our wheels straight out of it with their routers. So really high resolution to be able to get really tight wheels that are the same. The internal diameter of the wheel where the bearing sits is the same diameter as the bearings. So, so then they hopefully they'll go straighter down the track. Yeah, so they shouldn't, so they're not, they're not attached to the bearings with adhesive because they are the same dimensions and sit perfectly inside. Okay, that's a good, good theory for the team to have and hopefully that those wheels will impact the speed of the car. Um, so listen, guys, I want to ask Becca, as team manager, name of the car, Orpheus, uh, no, a poet and musician in Greek mythology. Why have you gone for Orpheus as the name for the car? Um, well, that was a decision made by Matthew and Lucy, who isn't here at the minute. Um, but, you know, that was, I think it was, what was it, Matthew? It was, um, it was... It was to do Greek. with the, the fact that the, the fact that Skylark makes such a loud song noise and such a um, distinctive songbird that we chose a name that matched that within mythology so it's supposed to be kind of symbolic well there you go is, I, I love that i love is that, that also why the front wing is uh, designed as it is with the little scooping over bit um the front the front wing came that was a way of bridging the because we weren't confident with the attachments down the sides that it would survive the deceleration so that was another point to add more structure into it to give it the reinforcement when it hit deceleration. Okay, so we'll have to see if it survives the deceleration then. Yeah, indeed. And also Brody, of course, I was thinking the musician there, Brody. But listen, uh, right, we move on. Uh, best of luck uh, to Skylark. Taking on another uh, bird of some sort, Phoenix. I like this. Where on earth are you? Uh, Angela, where are you right now? That's actually my teacher's name. I'm in Houston, oh, and okay. we are in our tech department right now, oh. next to our big machine oh. <laughs> that we car a car in. That's amazing. And I'm Morgan, the manufacturing engineer, and I cut the car. That's right cool. Awesome. I love the setup there. We're, we're yeah. seeing it. Um, how do you think the car will perform uh, on the track today, then? Uh, we're looking for like a a safe uh, ride. <laughs> <laughs> Safety it's is paramount. Yes. <laughs> Safety comes first, not speed. And I, I respect that, yeah. Phoenix Racing. Uh, all about the safety. Uh, well, the cars are on the track. Uh, lovely to, to see uh, where the car was made. Uh, let's get down to the racing. So Skylark is in blue, and then Phoenix Racing is in red. So let's get down. Oscar's ready to push the button, and away we go. So Skylark taking that one at 1 1.2 on two seconds uh, with a cruising speed of 18.6 metres per second. Uh, wow. So very similar to the ones we've seen in the last race as well there. So all quite close today. Yeah, 64, almost 64, well, just above actually, about 60 kilometres per hour, 40 miles an hour. Uh, that different than we're just seeing there. Uh, quite a lead, it just seems. Uh, but 
safely crossing the line. I can see the smile on Matthew. I didn't know if we'd get a smile from Matthew, but as soon as he's watched <laughs> the vehicle go past the line once, there is a man who's a little bit calmer. Matthew, happy with that? Yes, very. I'm happy that everything stayed in one place. I, I've spent, I spent the entirety of last night debating whether or not we would. Oh, wow. Uh, well, right. Worry and be anxious and stress no more. Uh, Phoenix, I'm going to come to you. Uh, most memorable experience, it said Ryan dropping our car at regionals. Very funny. Uh, I enjoy it, but not funny. How are you happy no. with no. that? <laughs> not happy at all. Uh, happy with that performance? <laughs> Do you think car B will fare a little bit better on the track? Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Okay, you can see... We're the... happy it got past the line. Yes. We're... Well, you have succeeded already then. That is done and dusted. But let's find out uh, whether Car B does equally as well <laughs> on the track. Best of luck to Phoenix Racing. Here we go then. Ooh, even closer that time. Yeah. Racing, uh, catching up there, uh, 1.423, uh, so good time there, 1.4, watching it again, good start from, from Phoenix Racing, and then sort of tails. We went through the uh, sector gate at about the same time, so only a tenth of a second, uh, not a tenth, a uh, hundredth of a second different there. Um, and then, yes, the finish, but uh, Skylark just taking a little bit faster through the second sector to gain the win. Yeah, Phoenix racing. Uh, Phoenix rises from the ashes. We are rising from our F1 in schools. No failures there whatsoever, both crossing the line. Uh, you've got to be happy with if there was past mistakes and failings. In your words, not my bad. A little bit more happy and relieved. Yeah, much, yes. much happier. Much happier. <laughs> Good. Uh, I'm glad to see there's some smiles there. Uh, listen, Phoenix Racing, uh, great to chat to you. Hopefully we'll be seeing you later on. Uh, and of course, Skylark, uh, how do you feel after watching uh, those happy with the time, Skylark? Yeah, that was amazing. I actually hadn't seen the finished car product yet because of a Corona scare. So. It looks quite nice, doesn't it? <laughs> I think. <laughs> <laughs> Love that, Brody. Yes, I agree with you. I can't. I have to be impartial, uh, but <laughs> looks very good. And Tim, we haven't spoken to you. Are you happy with that? Yeah, I'm really happy. It's like it's a lot of work, but it pays off in the end, doesn't it? So. Yeah, it also pays to have a great manager as well. So well done, Becca, as well. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, great to chat to you, Skylark. Uh, all the best uh, and hopefully seeing them later on. Uh, so two professional uh, races done there, uh, Sophie. Uh, notice any difference between the development class and the professional class? Yeah, I really think those wheels make a big difference. I really do. Uh, it's amazing how sort of on the, the track is very smooth anyway, um, and it's just... So like when you think about figure skaters and skating and things like that, it's, it's very smooth. But the difference between a sharp blade or having, it, in this case, a smooth wheel really makes a difference in how fast you can get that. It plays, plays a key part. Yeah, and so there's definitely notes to be made for, for the next mm. time in 2021. Or, of course, the Worlds. Georgina, any, anything you've noticed after uh, four races so far? Uh, no, I think we've got some very fast cars. Uh, interesting to see the difference of the weights having a slight impact there, uh, but also the, the wheels uh, playing a particular part today. Yeah, I've also noticed, personally myself, the, the, the fear in every team thinking, A, I've not seen the car because of the pandemic, everything that's happened over the last five months, but also just that excitement and real kind of like, we got across the line, that seems to be, uh, you know, yeah, prevalent massive, in all think, of those. Well, competing in it yourself as well, as soon as the cars cross the line, it's like, yes, it's made it past the finish line, it's not broken, uh, because as many teams will have found in testing, I'm sure, they often break yeah. loads and loads of cars. All right, well, listen, guys, let's head to uh, uh, now. Exciting this. CH Speed in the development class uh, from uh, taking on uh, from Simon Langton Grammar School for Boys. Um, what do we notice about the design? Uh, I feel like now from Brody, don't the cars look good? All of the designs look great after oh. he was so impressed with everything. But what do you notice then? Yes, no, no. So, uh, CH Speed has got, we were discussing it yesterday. Uh, paint 
job or spray mm. paint job. We couldn't quite figure out what had been achieved, so we'll have to ask the teams in a moment. Um, but then looking at Immersus as well, uh, quite, a, quite some accurate dimensions on the cars. They're quite similar between car A and car B, and also a very intriguing wing design of them. Yeah, um, and they, obviously we're trying to be team description here, Emirates, uh, trying to be eco-conscious, uh, innovative, revolutionary, ambitious. Also, or even using those words, you, you set out such a big stall of what you're going to do. And they'll have done that in their um, sort of chatting to the judges and their, their um, uh, presentation as well, won't they? So it's not just the, the make, it's just the, the ideas as well that have to come to fruition. Yeah, so bringing all of the ideas together, especially across team will have more ideas and combining them all together as well as if a car's raced in a previous season so if they were in entry class last year or development class last year then uh, it also all has an impact okay. on their car this year. Brilliant well listen uh, CH Speed are with us now in Jersey and uh, an incredible amount of books Matthew uh, do you know how many books you have on the shelf behind you? <laughs> Uh, I don't think I can give you an, an exact figure now. No, but, not even an estimate. I like that, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Matthew, uh, who shall I come to to ask about the uh, paint, the design of the car? Because Georgina and I are curious to know how you managed to get that finish. Uh, I think you, you should. OK, OK. Well, well good morning to you. Uh, explain to me how you got this design and the spray. Was it? You, how did you make that finish? It was kind of like a team effort. So basically, Louis is our manufacturing engineer and he had the idea of hydro dipping our car. So they would do the, sp uh, the spray paint and then hydro dip it as well to get that pattern on it. And obviously that was kind of difficult on our renderings as well, but we managed to figure out a way to make it very similar to the rendering drawing. Mm. Oh, that's great. It's, it's a brilliant finish as well, isn't it? Yes, yeah, no, it was a great finish with some it's quite a cool, cool looking car, which is very interesting to see. Yeah, Louis, uh, you're right in the middle of the screen. What, what's been the biggest challenge for you, uh, not just the last five months, but in terms of taking the design and, and making it into an actual car to race in just a moment? Well, you know, we've had, we've had a lot of time now because all the things, I think, um, just coming together over these difficult times and, you know, um, bringing our ideas forward and develop, developing them further from the regional. So I think, um, just, um, you know, getting our wing and our rear and our side fillip was um, the main job for us. And I think um, we, made, we made like big strides in that area. So I think that was, that was very good for us. Oh, well, congratulations. Uh, listen, great to chat to CH Speed. Uh, you will be on the track with Emirates. Uh, there you are. Awards. Oh, I love to see that. You love to see the trophies in front of the team. It looks like you've got your amazing pit display uh, behind you. Uh, who's the team manager? Hello, that would be me. Oh, who is me, sir? Uh, Sam. <laughs> yeah. Good morning to you, Sam. Uh, listen, tell me about your team all the way from Canterbury. Uh, what has been your, sort of the biggest challenge you've overcome getting to the Nationals? Well, we found it very difficult trying to work over lockdown, trying to communicate uh, and trying to get a great car that would still be as good as if we were working in school. Yeah. And, and are you happy with the design of your car? Are you happy with where you're at? Because you're about to race in just a second. Yeah, I think we're all very happy with the design of our car. We managed to make a few changes over lockdown, but uh, we still think that our car is ready to race. Okay, and if you went to the Worlds, what would that mean to you guys? Oh, it'd be amazing. I know everyone here is really would like to go to the Worlds and it would be a great experience for all of us. Yeah, I'm seeing the excitement from those guys there. If they weren't sat down, they would be moving about. I can just see from the energy. They'd be jumping about, definitely. <laughs> Listen, best of luck, Sam, and to the rest of your team. Let's get down to the racetrack. Oscar is ready to hit that button. Wow, clear winner there with CH Speeds. Um, not as fast as some of the other uh, cars have hit down that track, but um, very uh, steady. It seemed very steady. The, the idea with those wheels and, and the design uh, paid off there. Yes, yes, definitely. Looking at the cars, we're just watching them leave the start gate at the moment. They're both roughly at the uh, sector gate at the same time, uh, just under a hundredth of a second 
uh, difference. And then also going through the finishing gate, I think they both survived survived the finishing gate there we as go. well, which is a good result to have. Well, we've got Emirates on the screen behind us. Uh, Sam, uh, happy with that? Well, obviously, we would have liked to win, but I think that our car... And it's good that it survived the finishing gate. Yeah, definitely. And obviously, it's not just down to the racing. Uh, there's other points in terms of presentation and everything like that. So, so actually, it, it doesn't just come down to the racing, but you've still got... Another, so you've got to feel confident with that. Yeah, I mean, keep our confidence up. We've the other area of the competition as well. So Indeed. hopefully we can still... Indeed you well. have. Indeed you have. Right, let's have a FCH speed. Uh, got to be happy with that. How top left? You've got the world. That's where you want to go uh, exactly. to the world. Uh, are you the first race? Um, it, was, it was quite good to be fair. I think our uh, regional performances were very strong. So we're looking to improve on that. But overall, you know, it's good that we beat the other team. But I think we can improve on that. Yeah, indeed. And, and I like James. It looks like he has a light coming out of the top of his head, like some sort of wizard. Uh, well done. Uh, listen, let's go to the track again uh, to see if they can improve on those times. Faster time now, I believe, for CH. So uh, 14.3 metres per second, but Emirates getting the faster cruise speed. Indeed, yeah, faster cruise speed. Uh, in at about uh, just under 50, around 51 kilometers per hour and then 31 miles per hour. But as you just see there, it just seems to let Emirates down, just that speed just coming in uh, towards the finish line. Uh, what did you notice from that, Sophie? A anything to take away? Yeah, so everyone with the green uh, slots in the back, aren't they? So I think for them, that, that, that sort of rear wing design is great when you hit cruise speed because it gives you that constant speed and the constant flow. I think their trouble starts in the acceleration because the way acceleration is different to your cruise acceleration and your cruise performance. So I think that's where they, sort of their trade-off might have just um, not paid off for them this time round. But um, it's definitely something to play with in the future and have a modified design maybe for another go. Yeah, we were looking at that actually yesterday, the particular line, they were trying to get the flow going through, weren't they, in particular that wing? Yes, yeah, so they were trying to push this flow through the wing, essentially in this gap here, push it through so that you get a nice straight laminar flow afterwards, which doesn't wobble the car and you get a nice efficient way down the track. Um, unfortunately, what can happen with those sort of things is you get a bit of drag as it comes curves around the back of a straight edge. Um, which can slow you down, particularly when you're accelerating, and it's a, like an exponential sort of effect. So it's a really strong effect as you're accelerating and, and less of an effect as you're going in your cruise road. Well, they'll be very happy to hear that. However, the team just uh, next to Georgina and I are CH Speed. Very happy with that. Mahar, you, you happy with that result? Um, yeah, I'm very happy. I know it's improved from the regional time significantly as well. So there you go, high weight pays off. And we haven't spoken to Ibrahim, are you, are you happy? Uh, there you go, we can see actually in the shot as they, they come up there uh, are of course Emirates. Uh, you had some very detailed feedback there from Sophie. Uh, so uh, that is something to take on board if you do go to the world or potentially compete in 2021. Yeah, we'll definitely take that advice on board and modify our car and try and make it as the best as it can be. Oh, brilliant. Well, listen, uh, Sam and the rest of the team, congratulations. Well done on that. You should be very proud of that and hopefully uh, see you very soon. Uh, CHB have gone, uh, but they took that in terms of getting the fastest uh, track time today. And um, they seem like they, they've worked on that and, and, and gone away and they said they'd hit problems over the lockdown period at every team. Has, has come across, but, um, but they, they should be happy. And I said, Mahar said that they've improved on regionals. How away from regionals and they improve? So I think one of the things about regionals is you see all of the other teams, you see everything else that they've done, and also looking at your car down the track. So it's obviously slightly different with the deceleration gates. Uh, so some teams, uh, if they've not managed to achieve just enough sponsorship money, might not be able to uh, purchase those. So being able to see them at an actual track uh, we'll be able to create some new advancements in the car and hopefully make them faster for this year's nationals, maybe worlds or maybe next year. Indeed. All right. Well, listen, uh, so much fun so far. Don't forget to keep getting your uh, comments coming to us. We're on, uh, on Instagram and on Facebook as well.
us. You can uh, go to f one schoolsuk uk.co.uk uh, for all of the information uh, that you would need to find out for being part of 2021. That's the regionals and hopefully to the nationals. Uh, so Let's go then, let's head to race six in the development class with uh, Energia uh, from Exeter on Enhancing by the H Linlith Academy. Uh, so what do we notice about it? It's very similar sort of uh, white and red designs on both sides. Yes, I believe we don't have quite the right photos of the car in here, but hopefully... Oh, well spotted, Gina. I could hear someone in my ear, the F1 in schools team, uh, just, no! <laughs> It happens. It's live. Uh, that's what happens. But uh, yes, I believe that's a red line. But uh, looking there. at the team's logos, there's some interesting designs. And Agia going for a lightning bolt. Yeah. Uh, so maybe they're hoping for a lightning fast car. <laughs> yes. we'll, we'll have to see. Uh, indeed. I actually explained the team name. Uh, I can do that for you. Uh, the word Energia in Portuguese is translated into English from the meaning energy or drive. This symbolizes how we have the energy for the car to go fast and energy between our team that no other team. Those are big words, like them, and, uh, and very confident there. The team name, uh, what's the theory behind it then? Uh, who is the team manager? Oh, Bertie, Bertie in the top left, there you go. Uh, yeah, so our team name obviously more of just describes us as a team. I think as uh, a team, we have lots of energy between each other and we're all good friends, so uh, I think it helps a lot uh, and uh, it, the uh, lightning bolt signifies how we'll uh, go fast and uh, rip apart other teams. Oh, wow. Uh, a bit, well, Fighting talk there. Yeah, <laughs> literal. Uh, it was getting fisticuffs there for a second. All right, so what, what has been the biggest challenge uh, uh, for you? I'll come to Oscar. You look like that is an amazing gaming chair, if ever I've seen one. So, Oscar, uh, talk to me about the biggest challenges you faced. Uh, well, one we found choosing team name quite hard, and then once we did that, there weren't many challenges. We uh, we ha we were good together as a team. Uh, Oscar, slightly frozen there. You froze for a second, but the team oh. name was a challenge then. Uh, in terms of getting onto the racetrack, how do you think that your car is going to perform? Uh, I think it's going to do good. I know our design. Uh, experts, Will and Charlie, have done a good job with their car. Okay, Charlie. Oh, Charlie, love that fireplace. But anyway, we haven't got time to talk about the fireplace right now. We must talk uh, to the other team, Enhance uh, Racing by Muck L and H. First of all, am I pronouncing it correctly by saying with the Muck in there? Is that correct? Uh, yes. Oh, brilliant. Well, good morning to you, Holly. Uh, are you the team manager, Holly? Yeah. yeah. Okay, there you go. And you've got Lucy in the top right, uh, Finn and Ewan as well. So uh, tell me about regionals. Uh, what did you learn from there coming through to the nationals? Um, it was definitely a big step up for regionals. We found that there was a lot more work involved, mainly in, in improving the car and our wheels. Okay, so the wheels, that part of it, uh, learning from that. Uh, and, and Lucy, what was your involvement in this team? So graphic designer and I helped look after all the socials and website, which was really interesting for me because I've not really done a lot of graphic design. Yeah. So I've learned a lot from that. Um, I, I have to say, I love it. Finn is not up to speed with all of the sponsors. What is happening, Finn? Did you not get all of the sponsors <laughs> in the background? Well, I, I kind of blended it into the background. I just became <laughs> the background. So. It didn't work for me. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Listen, uh, best of luck to you guys. Uh, great to have you with us this morning. Let's get down to the track and see how the cars do. Wow, fast times there. Enhance taking that by 1.368. Very quick stuff there. It seemed fast. What, what did you take from that? Yeah, two very fast cars there. And very close down the track. Probably couldn't spot it by eyes across the finish line. For uh, they both look to have survived as well, which teams will be with. Yeah, there's always that panic, especially at the regionals and the nationals, when everyone is here and they're standing by the track side. Just 
super glue, the smell of super glue, of trying to get the wings back on quickly. At least they don't have to do that right now. They can take their time on that one. Yes, yeah, no, definitely. They have probably about a year to uh, work on it for the next, <laughs> next round. All right, um, OK, then. Uh, let me come to Ewan. We didn't speak to you, uh, Ewan. Uh, happy with that time and, and how you fared on the track? Yeah, I'm chuffed with that result. That's gone well. And what do you reckon for car B? Hoping for a good result with that. Like we'll have a fairly similar result. All right, I like that. You in? Just calm. Very calm is you in. <laughs> not, not too much. Just. Uh, Holly, I want to ask. Uh, everyone has mentioned about how difficult it was to get sponsorship. How did you find it? Um, sponsorship was not too much of a challenge. It's just we kind of reached out to different companies in different areas. So. In the likes of JMK, they we reached out to them for to print our team uniform. Hayes could get us quite good media coverage. They've given us a few articles on an app called LinkedIn. And then McLaughlin and Harvey were really open. They were really like easy. They were willing to like give us kind of what we needed as long as we gave them the appropriate coverage back. Oh, perfect. So finding out that sort of relationship, working partner, and then Lucy on the socials. Well, listen, um, let's get back to the track side uh, to see what happens. And then after that, we will chat with Energy. So let's go track and see what happens uh, in part two of this race six. Very close times there again. One point, roughly cars. So quite intriguing if you look at both of their car designs. There, I decided to go for the single car, virtual cargo shape one way, and one's gone for the other. Um, but you can see how it's having not too much impact on the car design. Yeah. Again, uh, congratulations to Enhanced Racing by Muck L H. Logos. Very happy that the race is done and behind you now. You, you're happy with that? Yeah, I'm really happy with that. It's what we expected to happen. So, okay, and and potentially worlds if that was to happen, uh, that would be a great achievement for you guys. Yeah, really, that would be really good. It's our first year doing this, so we're really happy that we even got this far. So, oh, well, there you go. Congratulations to you guys. Uh, you and uh, still looking very good. look energia. Um, listen, you were so. Close. Uh, with that race. Um, listen, Will, you're in the bottom right. Uh, what, and tell me how you found uh, racing on the track there. Uh, yeah, so me and Charlie were co-engineers. So uh, because this is our first year and we were both new to CAD and stuff like that, we thought we'd keep the design simple uh, and we went for a lightweight design we're, and it showed to be quite consistent and fast. So I'm reasonably happy, but it could have been a bit faster. Reasonably happy. Uh, we take that, wouldn't we, Georgina? Reasonably happy. Reasonably stage. happy. Hopefully, we'll get even more happy yeah. when, with the awards show later on. Yeah, and obviously, first time they've used in CAD and the like. Well, listen, guys, it was great to see you all the way down in Exeter. Uh, thanks for coming to join us today, and uh, hopefully, we'll be chatting to you again later on. So, enjoy the rest of the day. Maybe see you at half past two, all right, guys? There you go. A little wave from the gentleman there. Uh, right, uh, here we go. We move on to Voyager, just as you'll notice uh, on the track, just car for the development class here, uh, heading down on their own. And this is the Fulham Boys School, which, Sophie, uh, you were impressed with how they went through the process of testing. Yes, I was. Yes, so a lot of our entries focus specifically on sort of computer design and CAD and then CFD, so computational fluid dynamics. But what these this team actually tested the car so they've done um, a lot of practical tests that's all um, and their practical what's nice about that is you actually have in between modeling and reality and sort of they have missed because so far um, it's on the day that really counts yeah indeed. Georgina it seems sort of like uh, sort of looking at it and avoid a rocket and yes it's like a rocket. You can see there, uh, just above the cartridge, it kind of dips slightly, so that might have an impact on the aerodynamics of the car. Uh, looking at the weight though, 60, 62.9 grams. Uh, so hopefully, 
I feel like I'll give us a fast time. Indeed. All right, well, listen, Voyager, they are with us now. We can have a chat with them. Uh, I can tell you now, Voyager, no matter what happens, in <laughs> you will win. <laughs> <laughs> come on Ralph come on it was just a little yeah. bit of, uh, you're not competing against anyone else but let, talk to me about the process then Ralph of getting here to this stage and also the more important question why no car B talk to me Ralph so we kind of um, I mean we completely planned our route uh, to do a physical national final but um, when lockdown happened we had to kind of adapt and be versatile. So that's partly what happened with the car. So we thought, um, because we wanted to focus on making like our single model, kind of perfecting it and putting most of our funding towards that, we thought there'd be a better kind of use of our use of our funding, which we'd got to put towards the physical event. So we kind of channeled that into the one car, which yeah. we hope will be um, better than it would have been if we'd spread it between the two cars. I like that. There's logic involved in it. It makes yes. Go for one uh, really fast car rather than two yeah. slightly fast cars. And I, yeah, and, I yeah. and I love to see it, Santiago down there, uh, the sort of esports gaming chair. Obviously, I'm very familiar yeah. with the F1 esports role. Uh, what was your role in the team before we go to track? Um, so I'm I'm the team manager. Ah, oh, Santiago, great. And what is what was Philippe's uh, role in the team? Uh, design engineer. Okay, all right. So there we go. And Ralph's role in the team? Uh, marketing manager. There you go. He doesn't make much about the on, on the top as well. Yeah, <laughs> very much so. Well, listen, oh, yeah. guys. Best of luck. We're gonna go trackside and watch uh, your car in action. So putting all. The emphasis in one car making it as good as it possibly can be. So the lights are beginning to come in and we'll see how fast Voyager is. One point three three seven, I believe we can read on the race time yeah. just on the start gate there. So mm -hmm. a fast car and looking by it, it's uh, beat in our one point four second barrier for the development class. Indeed it has, yeah, uh, Emirates, uh, mm. I think they had a 1.305, but then, yes, uh, that is the done, I'm being told, uh, 1.337, so beating that 1.4, as you say, uh, they, they should be, they put all the energy into one car, and, and hopefully it's paid off. Yes, yeah, hopefully. Okay, um, listen, uh, I've got to ask Philippe, we didn't chat to you uh, too much, but um, uh, happy with that, 1.337? Well, um, to a certain extent, we couldn't entirely predict what would happen relative to other teams um, because obviously we don't have access to our own track. Um, but uh, considering the work we've put in, the extensive research we've done, um, and, and the design decisions which we've made, which have gone against uh, what other teams have done, um, we're I mean, I'm relatively happy with that um, as the design engineer. Um, of course, of course. I mean, fast is better, but 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 overall, I, I think that g given given the amount of work we put into the actual designing of the car, which we arguably and quite honestly prioritised over um, perhaps other other elements of the project, yes, I am quite happy with that. I love that, Philippe. That was such a measured response uh, <laughs> that weighed up all of the factors, <laughs> good and bad. Uh, I love that. That's fantastic. Well, listen, 1.337, Santiago, uh, great to meet uh, your your team um, and, and all the best. Hopefully, we'll see you uh, back again at half past two for the awards ceremony. So there you go. Voyager, uh, the Fulham Boys School, um, have competed there and they've set their one time, which was very good. It, it would have been awful if they hadn't set a fast time in the one go that they had. But they've but done they very have, well. They yep. have set a good time there. And, yeah. uh, and now we'll be able to into the professional class now uh, with the A school uh, taking on Cassiopeia. Um, now, uh, I love the design of Cassiopeia. I quite like that. They've incorporated everything in there and also given themselves a crown, early doors. Uh, so <laughs> they're expecting uh, to win for this. Uh, anything stand from you on either of the that we've got in front of us now? Looking at the car, two quite similar cars with this front wing, uh, the front nose cone uh, semicircular shape, um, and also the rear wing looking quite similar there. 
Uh, but looking at the car stats that we've got written down as well, 52.4, 52.8 for Vision and 51.2 for Cassiopeia. So two quite evenly weighted cars. Um, so it'll be interesting to see the wheel, base, wheel bases are quite different. Mm. Uh, who knows if that will have an impact? Might do. Uh, third place in the regional final for Vision, Robert May's school in Odiham, Hampshire. Uh, now, being a Hampshire uh, guy myself, I'm curious to have a little chat with Vision because I want to know what sort of improvements they've made from regionals. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, you can have a look around, take some ideas, you know, let it filter through and then use it. So uh, here we go then. Um, Tilly, uh, what is your, are you the manager of the team? Yeah, I'm the team, so I make sure I've and stuff like that. Yes, be a manager, uh, Tilly, uh, which is great to <laughs> see. Uh, how, has it been easy to keep everyone in order, in check, especially with the last five months? Uh, well, it's definitely more difficult than normal. Um, obviously, you're not able to see each other every day at school, but I think uh, we've been able to do it quite well. We've used um, Zoom and stuff to keep talking and stuff like that. So, yeah. Okay. And what have you learned? Uh, third place in the regional final. I will talk to your team who are waiting very patiently. Uh, they, w I, I think they were tempted to give me a wave, but then they thought, no, we're not going to show our hands at any <laughs> point uh, <laughs> during the screen. Uh, so, Tilly, what, what, have you, what have you learned? Um, I think definitely, especially with having lockdown, we've definitely learned um, to communicate more and like kind of learned skills um, about being like remote learning. Uh, um, we've definitely improved in our portfolio work and um, having been able to talk to other teams and stuff like that. Yeah. And, yeah. and I'm noticing from your note that uh, primary school age students during their STEM week, you, you got inspired, made your own miniature paper cars. Uh, how difficult has this uh, challenge been for you? If you, if you all think as a team, you've all grown. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, I think any challenges that you have, you definitely le um, have learning experiences from everything you do. Um, especially talking to um, the junior school, it was really nice to see them so kind of so interested in what they're doing and hopefully it will inspire them to join um, a team when they get to our school. All right. Well, uh, it's great to hear. Tilly, I'm going to get your team to give me a wave. Uh... Can I get the team to wave? There we go, perfect. Uh, <laughs> vigorous waving there, uh, great to see. It even made it sort of slightly freeze. Uh, there we go, uh, great to see and chat to Vision. Uh, excuse the pun there. Uh, Cassiopeia uh, are here and waiting to have a chat. Uh, I will come to Rachel, you're in the middle, uh, and there, Luca, Hi. give me a wave. Uh, Rachel, uh, what was your team role? I was the PR manager. Okay, and how easy is it to PR uh, for the F1 in schools? Well, it was a challenge at first, getting used to it. It wasn't something I'd necessarily done a lot before, but I mean, I definitely learned a lot from it, doing a lot of the social media, contacting sponsors. It was really good. Oh, fantastic. And who was the team manager, Rachel? That would be Matt. Okay, Matt uh, down there. Uh, Matt, AKA Matthew, uh, what do you expect to happen for your car on the track? Well, uh, hopefully um, a very fast time. Um, our results and testing showed that the car had a lot of promise. So I'm just hopeful that the car uh, delivers. OK, and can you please uh, pronounce your name of car? K, K, K as Epsilon? It, yeah, it's a bit of a mouthful. Um, it's C-A-A-Z Epsilon. So the C-A stands for Cassiopeia. The A-Z stands for the iteration because um, we were working alphabetically and the Epsilon uh, maintains the Greek mythology theme throughout um, our name and our, our, uh, yeah, our team. Oh. And also in all the logos. <laughs> in all the logos as well. Uh, yes. Right, <laughs> well said Georgina. All right, guys, we'll come back to you in just a second. Let's get down to trackside uh, to see what happens with the car. So vision in blue and in the black on the left of the screen, you will see Casio Pier. Best of luck. Wow, very fast indeed. You can see there, 1.129 from Vision uh, and a cruise speed of 19.7, very quick. Yes, very quick cars on the track there. Uh, they both look like they've head down the centre of the track as well, uh, particularly uh, Vision uh, going down the middle of the track there, which is ideal to uh, keep, keep a fast time. Um, so we'll have to see what the teams think about that. <laughs> yeah, well, Cassiopeia are here. Um, I'm going to pronounce it a, a tido. 
Yeah, Atido. Atido, nice to have you here with us this morning. Um, what did you make of that? Two very fast cars on the track. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a good time. I mean, we could have hoped for slightly better, but no, I'm definitely pleased with the time that we got. Yeah, and what, what was your role in the team? Um, so I was the finance manager and also worked with testing the car on CFD software as well as physical testing. Yeah, well, it looks like from looking at the result there, money well spent and well tested. Uh, so congratulations uh, to you. Uh, let's have a quick word with Vision, uh, the faster of the two cars. There is a smile on Tilly's face. Very happy with that? Yeah, definitely. Really pleased, yeah. And uh, your team look uh, pumped by that. I can see the design in the background uh, nodding off the head there uh, from, I assume, Alistair. Uh, very happy yeah. with that. Uh, what about Car B? Uh, did you, uh, obviously we heard from another team that they put all their efforts into one car. You had to spread that across two, as everyone else seems to have done. But what did you, are you confident with Car B? Yeah, I think so. I mean, yeah. Um... I think we'll be pleased with whatever. Um, I think we put an even and um, spread into both cars. So, yeah, fingers crossed. Okay, it looked like one of your team members was trying to do mine there or Shiraz to try and <laughs> influence uh, the discussion there. Let's go back to the yeah. track side then uh, to see what happens with Car B. He seemed very happy with that. They were almost celebrating, but we've still got another race to go here. Could all change. Well, there you go again. Two to... fast cars again. <laughs> Just trying to see. Uh, in the socially distanced studio here, I can see uh, the Cassiopeia 1.144 was the faster of the two. So uh, there you have it. Um, a win for both of them. I'm not quite sure. 19.6, I think that's a faster cruise time for the maybe. Yes, I think so. Yeah, we will. We're tied. I've been told tied. We don't have a graphic just yet, but we will do soon. Uh, so Vision, celebrating too soon, but you've got to be happy uh, with the speed of the car. 19.1 for your crew speed, um, speed there. Very quick indeed. We're really about that considering our regional. Yeah, and, and as a team, now that I am able to talk to you, uh, what has been uh, the best uh, challenge that you've overcome so far? Uh, probably speaking to our team as really we've had to split up over school. So we've had to make arrangements and do Zoom meetings. So it's been quite tough, but so you've got the hang of it now. Yeah, got the hang of it. It's the new norm. Uh, but uh, listen, congratulations to you guys. Uh, visit, uh, Vision uh, from Robert May's school and also uh, Cassiopeia. Very quick uh, in terms of that time. Uh, you must be very happy to get a little win there. Rachel, happy with that? PR, what are you going to put out there on the social medias? I'm delighted with that. <laughs> that is really good. <laughs> oh, fantastic stuff. And Matthew, uh, great with the team manager. Uh, hopefully that will be enough uh, to be seeing me later on in the award ceremony. Yeah, hopefully so. OK, well, listen, guys, great to see you this morning. Uh, listen, as we move on, we say goodbye uh, to Cassia Pier. Uh, we move on in the professional class to SBA Avidity Racing from Scarborough UTC. And they are going to be taking on Electron, uh, St. Olav's uh, Grammar School. Um, this is going to be a very, I think, a very exciting race, looking at the designs of the car. Yes, yes, hopefully. Just seeing the designs come up on screen now. Uh, so Avidity Racing, uh, SBA Avidity Racing have uh, quite some intricate different ideas in their car. So they've got two holes which you can just about see in their nose cone. Which would be interesting to see how that car fares up. And uh, then looking at Electron, uh, quite a light car, 51 grams, 52.4. Um, but also they've got quite similar wheelbases. Uh, so could have a could make them quite equal. Mm. Um, but we'll have to see on track. Yeah, they've got some pedigree, uh, SBA Avidity Racing from Scarborough UTC. F1 in Schools World finalist, North East Regional Champions, best engineered car, fastest car. That's on the resume, that's on the CV. Uh, we'll chat to them. Uh, in terms of their name, initially re they researched synonyms for speed, uh, resilient and relentless were found, uh, where we found a combination of avidity, which formed avidity racing. So that's how they came 
uh, about. Um, so let's go to Scarborough. Uh, there is the team. Uh, Hannah is, I'm imagining maybe a team manager, maybe Hannah? Yes. Yes, yes. yes that, we're seeing this, we saw it from the last team as well. The manager stays very much by themselves <laughs> and leaves the team yeah. elsewhere. Um, so Hannah, uh, what have you learnt through this great pedigree of, of winning uh, in the school's world finalist before? Uh, what's been the most challenging thing that you've had to, to deal with? I think you go to a competition and you've put your all into something and then maybe it doesn't go quite to plan or you learn loads of places where you can improve and you've got to have that resilience to be able to scrap everything you've done, start again and make it better and it's better off for it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and, and I'm seeing your team to your left, uh, Connor, Missy, Rianne and Matt. Uh, it looks like they've put your shirt up on the, uh, the, the flip chart there uh, for whenever you yes. want, it back, want it back, Hannah. Uh, but listen, I'll get away from the, from the team before I move over to meet the other guys. So can I get away from the guys, Connor, Missy, Rihanna, Matt? There we go. Thank you very much, guys. We'll be chatting to you uh, when we've gone down to the track to see how the car does. And here we go then. Let's chat to Electron. Uh, some familiar faces seeing these guys. Uh, who should I come to? Who is the team manager? Oh, that would be me. Ah, oh, Kaylin. Uh, so tell me about your team. What do we need to know about your car before we go to the track? Well, I hope, I hope that it's going to be the fastest car. That's the main thing. I hope <laughs> my car's the fastest. Yeah, how was the presentation <laughs> and, all, and all of the other work and the design to get to this stage? How, how did you, you find all of that? Oh, it, was, it, was, uh, it was, I found it, we all found it quite difficult during the lockdown period as it was communicating and like we couldn't have many face-to-face -face meetings but yeah we mainly got most of our stuff done before lockdown which was a good part yeah and i have to say with the uniforms and the backdrops that you've got on your screens it all look a little bit like superheroes so let's find out uh if your car is going to be a bit of a superhero on the track uh so best of luck to the guys oscar's just setting up uh, so far uh, sophie have you noticed anything that sort of uh, stuck out to you of why a particular design is, is working? Yeah, I think for me, one of the, like, like I mentioned earlier, the wheels being the main factor, but one of the other factors I've got is being symmetrical. Very slight differences make a huge difference. If you're going at that kind of speed, it really makes a difference if you're not quite symmetric. It makes you wobble ever so slightly. And when you're trying to get to the very end, you want to get there as quickly as possible, so the most efficient route possible. And if you're wiggling your way down there, you're actually going a further distance. It's going to take you longer to get there. So it's definitely something to, to watch out for, is those really precise, symmetric designs. OK, well, let's get to the track uh, side and see if that happens. Avidity in the white and green, and you will see Electron in the white and blue. Best of luck. Let's get going. Ooh, Ooh, some breakage there. Some some parts flying off. You never want to see that. Was that on Electron or was that Avidity? It might have been... I might have been both. Uh... See there, it looks like it's Avidity, isn't it? It is the Avidity, wheel. yes. Just one wheel coming off there. But a very fast cruise speed from Avidity racing there, though. 20.3 seconds. Might have been due to the uh, the loss of weight from that wheel falling off. <laughs> Might have been. <laughs> Might have been, but it also could not have been. It could have been to their intricate design of the two front holes. Yeah. yeah. And what was the theory behind that then, uh, guys? I've come to you to ask you about your your design. There's two holes at the front. Um, well, we didn't buy the car for S-ups, so we didn't probably want to use them. And it's just used to make the sort of high pressure air into the car, try to move into the top of the car. And so we're trying to sort of reduce the level of air on top of the car. Yeah. Yeah, it, it seemed like it was a little bit of like a Haas car moment from two years ago in the F1 when the wheel wasn't put on there uh, correctly. But, uh, but listen, still very fast and you'll be going uh, to race with car B now. So best of luck. Uh, we'll chat to Electron. They must be uh, very happy with that. Electron, uh, Kaylin, uh, you were worrying about whether you're going to be fast on the track. Uh, in your mind, that's what it matters most about. Uh, happy with that? Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. OK, well, yeah. there you go, Kaylin. Uh, calm and collected uh, as we head down to track uh, side, Oscar is ready. The thumbs up have happened. You can't quite see that, but uh, it's a very snappy action. 
the thumbs up. Quite, some would say aggressive, <laughs> some would say serious, but there's a playful element to it. En so, energetic. Yes, energetic. Here we go then. <laughs> Best of luck to both teams. Ooh, much, much faster. Yes, <laughs> very sleek there. 1.106, I think that's the fastest I've seen today. We will get every uh, race time confirmed. Such a great start from Electron. Yes, two very, very fast cars there. And in terms of 20.3 cruise speed for Avidity, a very fast car. Um, talking about the, the holes in the front of the car, Sophie, what, in terms of F1 and in terms of the aerodynamics of it, does, is it going to make much of a difference down there on the track side? It could do, um, and but by those numbers, it clearly has, um, which which is a great thing to see. That that sort of something we we didn't see in any other teams is sort of that drilling through of the main, main nose. So um, it, cl it clearly has made an impact for them. It would be interesting to sort of have a look a little later on at sort of the, some of the the slower motions to see whether it really does give that lift that it requires. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, Electron are on the screen there. Electron, a very very fast car uh, that you have uh, must be. I haven't spoken to you. Happy with that and, and sort of feeling confident that that might be one of the fastest cars to race today? Um, yeah, so we were, we were actually aware one of our cars is faster than the others because one's got uh, one dodgy bearing in uh, one of our cars and that was probably the slower car. So that was sort of expected. Um, I'm quite happy with how the car's done. Uh, like the, the weight was good. I'm happy that the aerodynamics um, a bit of come out uh, good so I'm like the, I'm the design manager yeah. um, so I'm happy that it's all come out nicely well you are top of the leaderboard I can confirm that avidity are in second 16 thousandth of a second <laughs> slower than you uh, there's not much in it but I tell you what uh, they don't get to race again you'll be happy uh, to hear so top of the leaderboard congratulations Electron uh, hopefully when we, when we may be speaking to you later on um, and avidity uh, we'll chat to you to before we say goodbye, um, Hannah, uh, team manager, got to be happy with how fast the cruise speed of your car is phenomenal. Yeah, it's always going to be close in this kind of racing. So we're really happy that we're second. That's um, a great a great outcome of this. Yeah, indeed. 16th thousandth of a second. <laughs> it's not much in it. Very, very close timings. <laughs> uh, infuriating early uh, close. But listen, guys, great to see you this morning. Uh, uh, thanks for competing. We hope to hear from you again later on. Uh, so there you go. SBA Avidity Racing from Scarborough UTC that we can see uh, who we've chatted to, who've raced their second now in the leaderboard. And then Electron uh, from St. Olaf's Grammar School in Orpington. Uh, great work from both of those teams. And they've got to be happy because they've just gone straight into the top two. Top two, yes. It's always a good feeling when you jump straight to the top of the leaderboard. Um, but yeah, the, all of the teams very fast today. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we're moving now on to some development classes again. Yeah. So we've got Nova Racing from Kim Bolton School and Odyssey Racing from Colton Grammar School as well. Yeah, perfect. So look, that is where we're going with the development class. I feel like I want to just take a breather though uh, from the racing so we can just get our bearings. Uh, again, excuse the pun. Uh, and uh, what we'll do is just relax a little bit because obviously F1 in schools isn't just about the racing. Uh, teams are also awarded points in specification and scrutineering judging, design and engineering judging, enterprise judging, marketing judging, and verbal presentation judging. It's over to Mark, the man with the most enthusiastic voice here at the F1 in schools to find out a little bit more about the specification and scrutineering judging. F1 in schools race cars are judged in two different ways, scrutineering and specification judging. The development of professional class each have their own technical regulations governing how the cars are to be designed. Scrutineering and specifications judging contributes 170 points towards a team's total. For scrutineering judging, the judges are looking at engineering drawings, renderings of the car, and the quality of finish and assembly of the actual item itself. For specification judging, the rules are split into three areas. General regulations governing basic compliance of the car, safety regulations which focus on the suitability of the cars to race, and performance regulations which directly affect how fast a car can travel. Scrutineering judging is assessed through A4 documents, while specifications judging is judged with a single car at regional finals and two cars at a national final. 
Scrutineering and specifications judges have an eye for detail, and are no stranger to a set of calipers. Just as in the real world of Formula One, every car has to satisfy the scrutineers before it can race. So there you go. Uh, uh, Sophie, just out of shot at the moment, is just re-jigging, re sat back on the seat. Okay. Everyone has had a little breather there, <laughs> <laughs> learning about the scrutineering and the judging. I've got to ask Georgina, um, obviously uh, you competed uh, and got to the F1 in schools uh, national National final. finals. Okay, um, so I want to know, what's it like to be on this side of the desk compared to previous years when you it, competed? Yes, it's, it's very different to be on this side of the desk. You see, obviously you get to see and hold all of the cars. Um, which is great because you can look at them, you can see some very, very strong cars this year. Um, and then also getting to present and work alongside you, Tom, is great fun. Oh, well, there you go. Uh, that's very nice indeed. And Silverstone is where you competed, uh, where I sort of first met your team. And incredible to see how fast the cars were. But I want to know a little bit more about, because we just heard about the scrutineering and specification. In terms of your role, you mentioned it earlier, what was your role in the team? So I was the manufacturing engineer for my team. Um, so that meant that kind of working to the rules and the regulations, as Mark's just explained, is is obviously very, you can, uh, can create a design on CAD, but actually making it and manufacturing it to those exact uh, specifications and to all of the rules, it often comes down to 0 0.1 of a millimeter or 0 0.1 of a gram. Uh, so it all affects, all affects everything. Yeah, and in terms of obviously uh, we're here and the, the teams can't be as well, which is, which is a shame. Uh, but in terms of, the fact that you would you'd go to meet those judges, uh, nerve-wracking moment, or kind of, or do, do you, did you feel confident that like we've done all the work we can, uh, we, we sort of, we, we can't do any more right now? Yeah, I suppose it's a bit of both. It uh, depends on, well, there's obviously lots of different types of judging, so somewhere you'll leave more responsibility in your team compared to others, so the engineering judging obviously lies quite heavily on the engineers, whereas the verbal presentation is across the whole team. Um, so those differences also affect the pressures, uh, but also actually being there racing, it's obviously lots of adrenaline going through you, so mm. it's all good fun. And in terms of, uh, obviously, when you were in those uh, teams, w was there another role that you kind of had your eye on? If you were to relive it again, is there another area that you would go to? Oh, that's, that's a tough question, that one, Tom. <laughs> um, I don't know, I quite enjoyed my role. Um, it gave me the opportunity to work a little bit on the design of the car, but also have quite a lot of the manufacturing responsibility. Um, but who knows, it all depends on working to your team's strengths. Yeah. So picking out each team member's strength is a good way to create a strong team. Okay, well listen, before we get back uh, to getting in there with Nova Racing and Odyssey Racing from uh, Colton Grammar School, I believe we've got a quick video uh, to watch right now. Well, actually, on this side of me, that's Evolve after they become world champions, getting to hang out in the pits, meeting all the drivers and numerous celebrities doing a pit walk. Uh, this is the photo of them collecting their world championship trophy. And here it is, the trophy right here. Beautiful, beautiful trophy. We're very proud to have it in our school, but not for much longer, which is very disappointing. I strongly believe in students taking part in extracurricular activities. Um, F1 in schools is the biggest, it's the best engineering competition in the world. So why enter? It makes the students stand out from other students across the country. It develops their key skills for future careers. I see students develop from young children into young adults through this competition. I see them develop so many life skills throughout that prepares them for the real world. They learn skills from communication, time management, and all the valuable engineering and marketing skills they're going to need when they enter the real world. Our regional finals last season, the team after five years, some of them have been in the team, get to the finals, first team up. There's people there representing Formula One. They get to the track, George had lightning reaction speed on the button, but the car fell to pieces, it exploded on the line. They hadn't actually tested the new 3D printed parts that have been made by their sponsor. The lesson learned is to test everything, don't just the shipping. 
F1 in schools is why we go into teaching. It allows you to do things students really want to do. They're really passionate about it and enthusiastic. You will be enthusiastic about it. It isn't confined by constraints of a curriculum. It helps you to really develop students, develop them in the department, raises the profile, and the best thing about it, it gets you out working with your local community. Don't look around at the other teams. Focus on yourself, develop yourself, have fun, enjoy the experience, you will get something from it. Obviously, the number one memory for me will always be watching the team go up and collect their trophies on the world final stage. But outside of that, the one for me that really will stick with me for a long time was unaware to us, back home at the school, all of the students were watching a knockout final. And when we actually won the knockout racing, we were sent a video of at least 500 students in the school hall jumping up, cheering as we won the final race. That will stick with me for a long time. Three words, life-changing experience. Well, I'm hoping Eclipse are going to win it from QE, but everyone's winners here and good luck to everybody. Who knows who can win? Anything can happen in the finals. There you go, F1 in schools, UK national final 2020, uh, hearing there from Phil Harvey. Great to see him again because I remember seeing Evolve uh, last year and going on to be world champions. Congratulations to them. Uh, and, and there's a lesson learnt there. George talking, uh, found out that the car obviously uh, exploded just before the finish line uh, is not what you want because testing, testing, testing. Um, how did you find uh, knockout racing? Uh, Georgina, I know you said I, I'm not allowed to ask you, but I am going to ask you. How did you find <laughs> knockout you racing? Um, yeah, so it was a different experience, knockout racing, because obviously you've practiced the time trials and you've practiced it on that side. Uh, but actually going up with loads and loads of pressure on you or on just one team member who's releasing it through the trigger, it becomes quite tense. Uh, but then when it fires down the track and watching yourself progress up through the knockout rounds is, is a really big achievement. Yeah, they keep mentioning uh, resilience and that kind of like it's out of your comfort zone and then but you learn how to deal with that pressure. That, that's something that, that obviously from this has helped you in studying at the moment. Yeah, yeah, no, massively. So uh, things like your verbal presentation, for example, is uh, great practice, especially at a younger age for being able to then to go into a university career or through other methods. Uh, it's great for team presentations and everything like that. Uh, well, listen, uh, doing a cracking job uh, and it's great to have you alongside me here uh, for the rest of the day. Let's get back then to the racing. Uh, you mentioned it before, the development class. We're going now to Nova Racing, Kim Bolton School versus uh, Odyssey Racing in Colton Grammar School. Um, and uh, loving the designs, but the designs uh, don't sort of necessarily mean they're going to be faster on the track but the designs might not kind of there might be something a missing link that doesn't connect the design to what the performance is on the track but what do you notice from those uh, so looking at them one thing that stands out straight away is looking at the weight of the nova racing cars are identical and that's something that's very hard to achieve uh, when you're spray painting your car managing to get the layers exactly the same so that it's smooth all the way across uh, to achieve that is a it's a difficult challenge there's some nice colours going for the, the gold and the silver look yeah. there as well. And it almost looks like a digger truck. What's going on there, so uh, Sophie? What do you notice from that design and Odyssey Racing? It's just uh, just behind you on the left of your screen there. Uh, digger, how is that going to affect the sort of uh, resistance and, and the sort of traction on, on, on the track? Yeah, it's interesting, that sort of um, front ring. I, I think the main aim of that is to push the air over the front of the tyres so you get the least, least amount of resistance on your, your front wheels. Um, it will be interesting to see how much effect that has because a lot of the time our front wings aren't often allowed to go above, like go quite to that high really. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that sort of steep angle makes a difference and whether that push up comes down at the right time so that it doesn't actually have a detrimental effect, effect on your rear wings, uh, your rear wheels even. Yeah, okay, well that's uh, it's good to know. Uh, uh, well listen, we'll, we'll go uh, to the track. I know Oscar is getting things set up, but it'd be great to chat to Nova Racing. Uh, exciting, uh, three males of the team, three females. You've got Molly, Hannah, Libby, Ewan, Joe and Charles. Um, and they've been keeping in contact with others and hosting quiz nights. Well, who hasn't been doing that over the last <laughs> five months? Uh, learning about everything. There's Molly to the left and Joe. Molly, uh, uh, quizzes. How well did you do in the quizzes? Um, 
I can't say I did the best, but you know, it was fun <laughs> to give it a go. <laughs> It, it, yes, I can imagine. I, I'm exactly the, in the same in the boat. Uh, as I found out yesterday, I'm not very good uh, with any games, and Sophie and Georgina <laughs> have explained uh, where I'm going wrong with uh, games, even like Uno. But anyway, let's not dwell on that. Let's talk about your car. Uh, what's the process been like to get where you are now? Um, uh, we... Go on. Uh, I Delegation, mean, it's been challenging. Very important. <laughs> <laughs> it's been challenging for, like, from lockdown, obviously, but because we've all been keeping in contact with each other, we've managed to keep up to date, make sure we're all up to speed with things, and yeah, we've worked well as a team to be able to get here today. Yeah, Joe, uh, winning the regionals, definitely a highlight for the team. Uh, what did you take from the regionals coming through to the nationals? Um, just sort of like getting used to the experience because it was our first sort of major um, like team event, so we kind of all got to see grasp of what we actually kind of brought properly to the team mm. and so it was just it was really good to win it we really enjoyed the competition and it, I'm really glad to be here as well yeah and, and Georgina you mentioned about how you managed to get the design uh, and the weight of the car exactly identical how, how did you go about doing that guys it was mainly quality control so to ensure that we it, between each um, process so when we were like 3D printing parts and as well as painting, we'd always weigh the car to make sure that it was as light as we could get it and also to ensure that both car A and B is the same weight. Okay, there you go, quality control. I've jotted that down. I am not gonna forget those uh, words there. Uh, Nova Racing from Kim Bolton School, uh, great to chat to you. Uh, let's head over now to Odyssey Racing. Uh, great to have you with us. All wearing the hats, good to see. Uh, and it's good to see some of your familiar faces here from last year as well. Uh, listen, Alex, uh, team manager? Yes, thank yeah. you. Um, we have been working quite hard during lockdown, so yeah. Yeah, I love the fact, I just guessed, I thought, I think Alex looks like the team manager uh, and I, I was getting better at this. Uh, so listen, uh, tell me, apart from lockdown and having to communicate uh, online with each other, are you happy with the car that you have sent us to race on the track in just a second? I think we're really happy, but I think Will could explain that a bit better. So I'll hand over to him. Okay. With lockdown and everything, we've had a bit of difficulty manufacturing the car because not all of us can go in or mingle at school. But we've done our best and we think we're quite pleased with the car design. Yeah, uh, well, listen, I think for every team, Will, uh, as long as you can say you've, you've given it your all and you've done the best you could, uh, then you've left nothing uh, behind going into this. Uh, well, I wish you the best of luck. Do you think the car is fast, Will? Um, it should be. <laughs> Good. That is what I like to hear, Will. Uh, listen, and great to see you as well, Chris. Let's go down to trackside then um, as we see Nova Racing taking on Odyssey, uh, Odyssey Racing and finding out about the different designs. Here we go then. Great start there. <laughs> but in terms of the camera angle at the end, I believe... Uh, that, Nova Racing has taken the win, I believe. Yeah, 1.319 uh, uh, compared to 1.352. And this feels like an eye test as I look across to the track, guys, uh, trying to see that. That is my optimum uh, level. Maybe it is time to get some new glasses. I don't know. But we're seeing the, the replay right now. Not much in it, though, is there? No, not much at all between the two cars there. Both look, looking to go nice and smooth into the uh, deceleration brushes as well. Uh, which is always a good sign for the teams. Yeah, and, um, and obviously we, we noticed the front wing there of uh, Odyssey Racing. Uh, uh, guys, uh, got to be happy with that. Quick, Will, um, is it as quick as you thought it might have been? Um, not sure. You're going to have to, we don't have our design engineer at, with us here at the moment, but uh, Robin knew the like, speeds from all of the testing. Okay. Well, virtual testing, so I'm not sure if we've met our goals, but it did look fairly fast. Okay, well listen, Will, get him on the WhatsApp group now. Get Robin on the WhatsApp group uh, and let's find out the stats. Uh, but very well done to you guys uh, for that first um, track speed there. Nova Racing, we'll, we'll, we'll chat to those guys uh, from Kim Bolton School. Uh, Joe was confident, obviously from winning the regional, definitely a highlight for them. I wonder if they would have 
be happy with those speeds that they set down on the track. Uh, Joe, happy with that? As in, we, we mainly just focused on sort of like getting a car that could produce a good enough speed, but this, this is very good for us, which I'm really happy about. Oh, well, there you go. Some happy team members there. Uh, what did you notice from that race then, Georgina? Hey, uh, Yeah, so two very close cars. Um, no racing. Hopefully we'll see in race uh, the second race in a moment if the uh, two cars being the same weight will give us roughly the same time or if there's some slight other uh, aerodynamic advantages on one car compared to the other yeah. might lead to a faster time. But we spoke to Molly and she said quality control. So I'm expecting expecting exactly the same result from this. To the, uh, they, to the hundredth of a second? Uh, to the to the hundred, thousandth of thousandth. a second. Thousandth of a second. All right, then let's go back down to the track side. Uh, Oscar is ready. Best of luck to both of the teams. So that's Odyssey Racing taking the win there with wow. 1.325. 1.325, I jot that down. Uh, we've got Nova Racing on the screen, uh, split very fast, uh, cruise speed 15.3. And I mean, there's not much in it at all, just a hundredth uh, seconds there, uh, potentially. I'm gonna turn to Georgina because uh, reading out the speeds is not my strongest point. What are we saying, Georgina? Uh, so yeah, we're looking at a hundredth of a second there. 1.325 to 1.339. Yeah. Um, and then the split as well, only uh, 0.05 difference between the two cars. Yeah, so Molly, that quality control has uh, paid off there. Didn't get the fastest there uh, on that second time, but, but still there or thereabouts, that quality control has paid off. We've improved from our regionals as well, so all our um, improvements have definitely paid off. Oh, well, there you go. Well done to you guys. Um, well, listen, uh, we'll say goodbye to you now. Uh, congratulations on the achievements on the track and maybe see you later on at half past two. Uh, don't forget, anybody watching right now, you can subscribe. You're watching on YouTube and that way you will not miss uh, the awards ceremony. Um, so there you go. Uh, Odyssey Racing um, did very well indeed there, winning that second uh, race. Got to be happy with that. But in terms of times, they're all very similar in terms of that 1.3. Uh, we've had a 1.59 at the beginning, but it's almost as if they're getting a little bit faster. They are, hopefully going to get a little bit faster but then some of the teams at the start were also uh, very quick so we'll have to have a look at the leaderboard uh, in a bit and uh, see if we can see if we can judge the difference between the teams. Yes uh, well we are almost coming up to two-thirds of the way through with the racing on the track today for the F1 in schools uh, UK national finals 2020. Uh, I'm joined here on the desk uh, by Georgina Edwards uh, the F1 in schools UK national finalist and over to the side we've got Sophie Harker. Sophie, um, next up in the development class is Dynamic Racing, uh, Money Thief High School. Um, you liked the design of this, just to bring everybody up to speed again, uh, what, what was it that you liked about this one? Yeah, so for me it was actually the rear wing um, and it was their testing process they went through, or design process more than their test actually, is they designed the, this sort of like circular wing you can see at the back here. Um, and they tested it in both ways. So they best it, tested it as a convex and a concave sort of circle. So one going that way, one going that way, and um, just sort of see what the impact would have and then chose their best design from there. So I liked that sort of progression in design and sort of see how that affects it. And um, that, was, that was my big takeaway from them, actually. Yeah, we, we, we heard earlier from the world champions of old, Phil Harvey, he said about testing, testing, testing. Mm -hmm. um, let's see how that testing has affected the leaderboard. Let's have a quick uh, look at that. Uh, wow, uh, I almost want to take out my phone and take a quick picture of it <laughs> to keep updated with it all. But there you go, this is mixed, both of the classes in development class and professional class. And as you can see, Electron at the top with 1.106, right behind Avidity Racing. And then you have Vision uh, in third, that's Robert May's school. So well done to all the top three at the moment. Um, but there you go, uh, Dino Go right at the bottom there, but they obviously had uh, some issues when they sent in terms of sending in and not being able to test it. But the more testing you can do, you'd expect to be higher up that table. Yeah, so the more testing, the more kind of iterations of car designs you can make. So for example, you might make exactly the same car design and just change one small part of it. So you might change the rear wing or you might change the front wing. 
and then going from that you can test them both down the same track the same conditions um, and see which is fastest and then take that one on into uh, further designs okay well listen uh dynamic racing are on the track with peregrine racing from Bolton high school in edinburgh um so there you go uh we will be seeing them race in just a second not much difference in terms of uh, the design except maybe the length uh, dynamic racing um, have gone for a shorter length there. Uh, dynamic Racing, uh, I'm just going to check my watch. Yes, 5 to 12. I can still say good morning to you. Uh, so, guys, uh, I want to know. Well, good morning. <laughs> there you go. Uh, obviously, we're going to Money Thief, so there is a slight delay, uh, which I appreciate in the distance of the country. Uh, but um, can you introduce uh, everyone in the team, please, this morning? Nice to meet you. I'm Maximilian Witt and I'm the design engineer. I'm Callum Hodges, the manufacturing engineer. I'm Joshua Kirkland and I'm the team manager. I'm David Baird and I'm the graphic designer. I'm Joe Perkins and I'm the social media liaison. And together we are Dynamic Racing. Ah, fantastic. I love that. It was almost synchronised. Well rehearsed. I have to say, well rehearsed. Uh, so listen, um, tell me about the biggest challenge that you've had getting to the Nationals. The biggest challenge I think we've had so far is just coronavirus and the lockdown itself. Uh, lockdown has proved quite challenging for communication via the team. So we've come up with solutions such as Zoom and Teams to keep communicating in these troubling times. Also, manufacturing has been more difficult as I haven't had access to the workshop to manufacture the car. Yeah, Callan, good. I like that. Getting in. Uh, the reasons why. Early doors, Callan, I, I like to hear that. Um, but listen, um, best of luck to you when we get down to the trackside. We'll chat to you after we've seen uh, the first race. Uh, let's go to Peregrine Racing from Broughton High School. Uh, good morning uh, to all of you. Uh, team manager, can I chat to the team manager, please? Um, well, our team manager isn't actually here uh, as they weren't able to join. Well, but um, our team manager was Ben, and I was the um, graphic designer, and Talia, who also wasn't able to make it, was the design engineer. Oh, well, listen, you have taken on the duties very well there. Uh, now team manager, or team spokesman, shall I say. Um, what have you learnt, um, first and foremost? I know the car's called the Falcon, so I'm expecting it to be very fast on the track. Uh, but what have you learnt from the whole process, going from regionals to the national final? Um, well, during lockdown as well, I think it taught us many lessons and it gave us something to focus on that was like, quite exciting and we were, I don't know, we were quite, um, we were more productive during lockdown as well and we've also learned how to work better in a team and how just to be more productive and focus on things. So. Yeah, well, listen, I, I, hopefully it all pays off because we're going to go trackside now. Great to meet the Peregrine Racing team. Let's go trackside and see what the cars can deliver. So Dynamic Racing taking the win there, 1.293 seconds. Uh, but Peregrine Racing getting the faster split time. Um, so faster through the first zone, so the launch zone, uh, but then uh, Dynamic Racing managed to pull it back in the second part of the track. Yeah, uh, there you go. Well, look, Peregrine Racing are still on our screen behind us, Georgina, so it'd be rude not to, to have a chat. Uh, still smiles on the faces uh, of everyone uh, and nodding of the head. Happy with that. Um, what, what do you expect for car B going onto the track? Um, but I don't know, we'll just have to see. Yeah, we will indeed. Uh, but listen, I like the smiles and the fact that you're here at the National Finals 2020 is a great achievement. And I, I'm just going to be willing your car down the track, that extra, just to see if it can compete uh, alongside uh, Dynamic Racing. So let's have a chat with Dynamic Racing. Uh, the guys there, they seem uh, to be pumped. Callan already had uh, the fact, he got in that excuse very early doors. Uh, that couldn't get in the factory to, to make adjustments, but got to be happy with that speed so far, Callan. 
Yes, very happy. Okay, and in terms of your car B, what do you expect? Much difference or pretty much roughly the same? I think they're mostly identical and I think they'll be okay. Okay, well, there you so, go. So, uh, it's worth noting that I believe there is a slight difference in weight between car A and car B. So, we hope there won't be such an issue. Okay, and I have one, but it's a burning question. I need to know who decided that you would go colours orange or blue? How did you divvy up the, uh, the merch? I think it was all of us together. Okay. All right, good. All right, well, there you go. We are going to go trackside right now uh, to see whether that weight difference makes any difference with the times. Here we go then. And again, two very fast cars, 16.2 metres per second for Peregrine Racing's cruise speed. Um, but then looking at the split time, the split time is faster this time for Dynamic Racing. Uh, so a faster launch zone for them. Yeah, um, Peregrine Racing uh, taking the win there, so willing them on uh, worked a little bit. Don't forget, I am impartial, uh, but just <laughs> willed them on a little bit there, just to, just to set a faster time. But good again from Dynamic Racing um, with their design. Uh, did you notice anything with uh, their setup, with the concave, and, and what you liked about how they tried and tested it? Yeah, I think what I liked about it is, is, is what Georgina was saying earlier, is you've got to test and test and test, and it's those tiny little differences that make the big difference here, because when you are going at such speeds, and it is, like, like you say, hundredths of a second, hundredths of a second between you, those tiny, tiny differences and sort of testing all these minor changes make a huge difference. Mm. Well, well, there you go. Let's have a look at the leaderboard, guys. Uh, here it goes. Does that affect much of the standard? And then in 11th, Peregrine Racing. So uh, here's that moment where we go back to the teams. And I, I mean, I feel like if I ask, are you happy with that eighth place at the, at the moment? Dynamic Racing will say, no, we would have liked to have been higher up. But it, it, when you look at that and all of the things that you've, <laughs> adversity you've faced, uh, a little laugh there uh, from Max Winnin. Uh, you've, you've gone, you've seen what your car has done. Are you kind of content with it? Yes, yes, we're really happy with that. Very glad they made it down there in one piece as well. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, tick, tick on both cars then. Well, listen, um, best of luck, Dynamic Racing. I may be chatting to you later on during the award ceremony. And we'll just go back to Peregrine Racing. Uh, but uh, what, what did you make of that then? Uh, fastest there uh, in the second race, but now 11th in terms of the speeds on the track. Um, yeah, happy with it. <laughs> okay. Did well. Okay, you did very well indeed. Well, listen, I might be chatting to you later on uh, in the award ceremony and you may, as all of the teams could be, heading to the world. So lovely to chat to you uh, this afternoon. Uh, the time has just changed, just gone past 12. So there you go. Uh, out of those two races, um, it's kind of what we expected with those cars, but they still set um, relatively uh, good yeah, times. Yeah, so really fast times, especially for the development class as well. And um, they were towards the, the top of the class there, uh, which is big teams. Professional class ones being slightly faster because of the slight change Mark spoke about before. Yeah, okay. Well, listen, uh, heading on to the professional class now, we head over to see Apex Racing uh, from Sprouston uh, Community College and Nemesis Inferno, uh, Pencoid Incomprehensive School. I love the name though. This menacing nemesis inferno it's, it all sounds like don't mess with us but whether they could deliver on the track uh, we will find out uh, anything you notice about the weights in particular or, or the data there so the weights looking at apex racing 50.1 so just 0.1 of a gram uh, above their their regulation weight which obviously they've tried to achieve that uh, exactly um, and then nemesis inferno they've got quite an intricate uh, rear wing design looking with those little lips to the side, uh, which is Sophie was speaking about before, will uh, stop the air falling off the uh, sides of the rear wing. Um, so yeah, two very good designs. It also looks as though Nemesis Inferno has made their wheels from a carbon tube. 
Ooh, okay. Which you can just about spot. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit worried though. In their name, Nemesis Inferno, set fire to the finish line. Um, if that does happen, that would kind of ruin all the racing uh, for this afternoon. So I'm hoping that doesn't quite happen. Uh, so listen, uh, Apex Racing, uh, representing uh, England, uh, taking on Nemesis Inferno from Wales. I believe we will be able to chat to Apex Racing, a uh, team consisting of Jacob, Rebecca, Amy, Lee, Ben, and Marcus, uh, joined by Ben and Lee. Uh -huh. uh, your backdrop, Ben, oh, on point, very much team branding. Thank you very much. <laughs> so Ben, what, what was your involvement uh, in getting uh, to the finals? So I was the design engineer of the car, so I was responsible of designing the car and I'd done some testing uh, around the car on virtually and physically. Okay, so how did you manage to keep it to 50.1 grams? So we were very uh, close in making it well designed it, trying to keep it as close as we can to the regulations. But when we were actually making the car as well, we tried to ensure to use as least paint uh, as we needed to try and keep it as we wanted it, really. OK. And Lee, you're there uh, representing the team as yeah. well. You're missing a few members, but uh, what was your involvement? I was the manufacturing engineer, so my role was to make the cars and just about anything else the team needed. Yeah. So, were they quite a demanding team? Make this leave, make it now. It needed to be made an hour ago. They did set me quite a few deadlines to get everything done by, but we got there eventually. So. Oh, well, indeed. Uh, now, obviously, you're based in Norwich. Is that why the wall is a yellow colour, Lee? Uh, my room has a New York theme, so that's why we've got the yellow. OK, all right. Nearly. Uh, nearly, nearly. <laughs> New York, Norwich, they're practically the same place, right? Uh, listen, guys, uh, great to chat to you, Apex Racing. Best of luck on the track. Uh, let's have a quick word with Nemesis Inferno from Bridge End. Uh, I'm hoping you don't set fire uh, to the finish line. Please, can that not happen? Uh, great to see you again. Um, I want to chat to the team manager, if I can. Hi. Hi, Erin. Uh, afternoon to you. Um, so what do you expect to happen with your car on the track today? Um, well, we're just hoping it goes as fast as it can. Um, we, it went well in the regionals, but because of lockdown, we haven't had a chance to test it yet. So we're just seeing how it goes, I suppose. Yeah. And, and it, just to put you on the spot, Erin, just for a bit of fun, it says that the team description is determined innovative, passionate, inspiring, creative. Who is the most determined member of your team? <laughs> oh, I, 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 I'm not sure. I mean, I think we're all quite determined, actually. I don't think I could narrow it down to one person. That is a diplomatic <laughs> manager. Love to hear it. Right, uh, let's go and see how well your car does on the track. Best of luck. Uh, Oscar is ready. So you will have Nemesis Inferno in the black and red. Wow, 1.132 for Apex, Apex racing. racing. Yes, 20.1 meters per second for their cruise speed. Uh, so that's a very, very fast time. And looking at the cars going down the track, they both look very smooth, as though they're just gliding along the surface there. And 1.166 uh, for uh, Nemesis in Inferno. Uh, Apex Racing with that time, go to fourth and in sixth place will be Nemesis Inferno. So very good stuff from you guys there. I, I, I mean, I keep asking every team, are you happy with that time? But is that the time you expected? Um, the fastest, but um, it is what it is. And I think, yeah, we're quite I'm proud of the team yeah. for what we've done. Yeah. Oh, great. I love that expression. It is what it is. But you know what? <laughs> You've got another uh, chance to get a better time. Uh, Maddie, I just want to check because uh, you haven't blinked much and I just want to check you're OK there. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I'm just <laughs> concentrating on the race. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you are concentrating on the race. Another chance. I blink and it's gone, really. Exactly. So, I mean, 1.166 <laughs> is incredibly fast. So you do what you're doing, Maddie. Uh, we'll just chat to Apex Racing uh, because obviously they had a 1.132 which takes them up into uh, fourth place uh, our New York Norwich uh, based team um, I believe that we might chat to them just before there we go uh, Lee um, you manufactured the car 1.132 puts you into fourth place how are you feeling I'm quite impressed with that I think that's better than what we got in testing so happy with that 
Okay, 26,000th yeah. behind first place. So there is not much in it at all. Uh, ben, do you think Car B is going to get that 26,000th time? Well, as long as they are identical, they should be pretty similar. But let's just hope that's got that slight gram of less. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Uh, and maybe there's enough paint to get you across that finish line. <laughs> uh, best of luck then. Apex Racing. And you are watching Nemesis Inferno. Here we go. So Apex Racing winning there, 1.137. So fast time there. Yes. And also the split uh, under 0.4. So yes, very, very good split times. Five thousandth of a second uh, slower uh, in that second one. Uh, 1.132 in the first race for Apex Racing and then 1.137 in their second race. So no movement on the leaderboard, but again, uh, very fast time, especially for that cruise. Uh, so Lee, um, very consistent with the manufacturing of the car. Got the weights accurate, despite applying very, very thin layers of paint at a time and weighing after each coat, and that clearly paid off. Yes, it did. Uh, ben, uh, right, what rest of the team, are they on a WhatsApp group? Do you mes message them now or do you reckon yeah, they're watching? Yeah, they've five? all been. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they've all been messaging. Okay, yes. perfect. Well, listen, uh, fourth in the leaderboard. Hopefully you stick around there and hopefully we'll see you later on uh, for the award ceremony. Have a great day. Thank you. There you go. Right. And Thank you. There you go. Uh, okay, then, uh, Nemesis Inferno. Uh, it is what it is, Annabella Olivia. It <laughs> is what it is. So, Holly, we didn't speak to you. Holly, uh, your thoughts on the racing just then? I'm so happy with how it's all gone. I think we've done as be be best as we sort of could in the situation that we had. I'm just so proud of everybody. Okay, uh, I'm very impressed with the Molten Monster was the name of your car. Uh, and just before we <laughs> say uh, goodbye to you, Holly, who would you say is the most determined in your team? I can't say we're all we all have our eye on the prize and we all we all want the best for everybody. Oh well, listen. I think we're all there. Well, that sort of attitude, it'd be great to have you in the World Finals. Enjoy the rest of your day. See you at half past two for the yeah. awards. All right, take care, Nemesis. Uh, let's have a look at the leaderboard. Um, and this is where we're up to now after that race on the track. Apex Racing into fourth and in sixth place, Nemesis Inferno. I, I love their team camaraderie there. There's definitely a kind of a, a warmth to all of them there. Yeah, they were, all felt like a really good team. Yeah. And also, did you see their uh, outfits as well? It <laughs> yeah. looks like they were in uh, race suits. <laughs> Ready to get down. Yeah, it was, um, I, I've seen that team before and they're, they're great fun. And, and I suppose it helps with all those adversity and times when it's not going to plan that you know that you can lean on your teammates. Yeah, and just work into everyone's strengths. Um, and just like if something goes wrong, just explaining it to everyone and being quite honest and open with your team is, is always quite helpful. Yeah, and all staying on uh, company policy of don't say who's the most determined. Uh, <laughs> I like that. Uh, right then, uh, we move on then uh, after uh, that, uh, well, those two races there from Apex Racing and Nemesis Inferno. We move on now in the pro class to Eclipse from Queen Elizabeth's Grammar School to Aquila Racing. Uh, we decided, have we gone with, we decided throughout this morning, Aquila, Aquila, what have we decided on, Georgina? Aquila we went for. Okay, so I did say it right first time. Yeah, you, okay. you did, you did get it right. I should have myself. Uh, where was my team when I needed them? Uh, <laughs> here we go then. Uh, Eclipse, uh, they, uh, from Faversham in Kent, uh, they wanted, uh, with their name, exploring all the options, um, they went with the one that the best they could, that is Eclipse, and I imagine they want to eclipse all of the other competition. Um, difference in the weight, but not much. They've just scraped in there with the, the weight. The 50 grams exact. Yeah. It's always a good weight to have. Um, and then looking, we've also got the carbon wheels making a reappearance again on the Aquila's car. Um, and also a curved rear wing design as opposed to the straight one from Eclipse. Um, so it'll be interesting to see the difference between those two, um, as well as the difference in the, the wheel bases and the car lengths. Okay. Um, now, uh, Sophie, the Aquila design, is that what stood out for you? The yellow, I know one of your favourite colours, so it, it definitely is. jumped out at you. But what else? 
Yes, I mean, being a yellow car owner as well, I'm a big fan of a yellow car. So, yeah, no, so the, the biomimicry was really evident in this one. This was sort of that, that ridge down the middle um, mimicking the beaks. So that was what I really liked about this. It'll be interesting to see how that works. Um, and as Georgina just says, it's a curved edge at the back. And don't realise a wing shape for is a lift, but also a cil cylinder creates an awful lot of lift. Um, most areas of um, so it'll be good to see how, how that um, plays into their, their, um, their race time. Okay, all right then. So Faversham uh, team will be joining us. We have uh, in the team Javier, Maisie, Evie, John T, Benedict and Isaac. Uh, so they go in organised uh, to be on the Zoom camera. Uh, who shall I chat to first and who is the team manager? Team manager with you? Hi, I'm team manager. And who might you be, sir? Uh, I'm Javier. I'm team principal and design engineer. Okay. Uh, Javier, tell me, be honest with me, uh, what's it been like, this whole process from regionals getting to the nationals? It's been extraordinary. Uh, we've had so much fun and learned so many things during this time. Uh, it's been great to work with this, um, our main aspects that we already did years. So I've actually uh, become friends with uh, people in different year groups. Okay. All right. So uh, not even in the same year group, but had to w work out a way of working together and getting the best results. Yeah, yeah. It, it was definitely a challenge to begin with, but we eased into it and yeah, it's turned out successful so far. Okay. And your car, does it have a name? Uh, we haven't actually named our car specifically. Okay. All right. Yeah. Just a clips. I like that. All right. Well, this is uh, solid. Uh, great to chat to you. We'll see how well uh, your car, Eclipse, does on the track. Um, let's have a quick word with Aquia Racing. Uh, Lucy, representing the whole team. Yeah. Okay, no pressure. Uh, obviously, there's no Frank uh, or Pat or Lucy or Lily. Uh, so, um, what was your role in getting here to the Nationals? Um, so I'm finance manager, but I've also been doing lots of other stuff to help out with the rest of the team. Yeah, I, I suppose that's how it works. You, when then there's a problem arises, everyone gets on board, all hands on deck and tries to fix it. Uh, yeah, um, so we've all been like trying to keep contact with each other to fix anything that's not gone as well as we wanted it to. Yeah, and um, Sophie uh, has mentioned about the yellow the car what, what was the theory and behind going with um we just thought lots of other teams pick other cars and we thought yellow would stand out well and i think it does yeah definitely does i, I know straight to that uh, in the boxes here <laughs> at the denford factory so best of luck um let's go to trackside then so it's aylsham taking on faversham here in eclipse versus a queer racing then here we go yellow for a queer and the white <laughs> Or eclipse and very fast. That was close. One point, yeah. So if you said very close that there. Was close that, yeah. One point one zero three. I think that would be the fastest so far. I believe that is our fastest time. Um, but yeah, looking at the the cruise speed of eclipse, are also very high. So two two very competitive, very fast cars there. Very fast yeah, indeed. Aquila, we got L Lucy. Uh, obviously, all that money was well spent. That is a very <laughs> fast car. Fast. <laughs> Very fast. <laughs> um, well, there you go. Um, in terms of uh, your car B, uh, have you been able to test it much? Will it do the same? Could it go even faster and break that one second barrier? Um, I should hope it's just about the same speed, been testing a bit. Okay, well, good. Well, Lucy, um, I like that confidence, maybe breaking the one second barrier. Both cars incredibly fast there, Georgina. Yes, both incredibly fast. They're also some very different designs, so they were didn't really look very similar at all, um, but we're both, both of equal as fast. So it's interesting how, say, you might have a front wing design on one, but it could be faster on a different type of car. Mm, okay, uh, where is that Eclipse team? Uh, the car with no name, doesn't need a name uh, because it was incredibly fast. Uh, you must be very happy with that. I mean, it was quite, I was quite pleased with what we did get. It was, um, I think we we're all quite happy with that. Yeah. yeah. And, and what was your involvement uh, with making the car? Um, I personally didn't design the car. That was Javier's job. But um, have you joined to talk about car design? 
Yeah, yeah. So I was in charge of the design and manufacturing of the car, and obviously due to COVID nineteen, that was quite a difficult task. But we managed to uh, submit all our time. So very happy with that. There you go, getting on those strict timelines uh, that you had. Well, listen, you have got car B to go on the track. Hopefully, uh, it could break that one second barrier. I've been given permission, have you, that I'm allowed to bang this table, maybe even, I'm not allowed to flip it, but I would don't, do. Don't, don't flip it, Tom. I, I will do, we're breaking the one second barrier. Let's make it happen. All right, guys, uh, we'll chat to you in a second. Uh, leaderboard, there it is, as you can see. Aquila Racing going straight, 1.103. Next up is Electron with one point, wow. Three <laughs> thousandths of a second. second. Uh, Some very, very, very close cars. Yeah, there you go. Um, there you go, I'm being told in my ear, side by side, that would be about eight centimetres uh, in uh, distance there. So that is not much in it at all. Uh, as you can see, uh, Aquila Racing uh, excited to get going. So is Eclipse. Let's go down to trackside then. Oscar's pushed the button. The lights are all popping up. Best of luck. So 1.168 there for Eclipse, leading them to take the win. Um, and it's slightly, two, slightly slower cut times than last time. So they're uh, the first cars were the fastest on the track. Um, but yes, both what, look, what looking down the centre of the line again. Yeah, what, what could that be down to then? Like, I'm just, just in, curious in sort of a scientific uh, uh, way. Why could they be that different? Is it just down to the difference in weight, Georgina, Sophie? Is it, it because they've gone for the same design, but it just never comes out the same way? Is that, that what it would be down to? Yeah, it could be a number of factors. It could be your symmetry slightly off. It could be um, perhaps if you've 3D printed apart, it's not come out quite as clean, which can just disrupt the airflow. It is honestly the most minuscule of changes make a huge difference. It could be your distribution of mass. Um, so you might have your centre of mass might be slightly further back or slightly further forward, and that can make a difference. So it really is just those minuscule little changes that can... That, as, as evident, it makes a big difference. Yeah, well, uh, congratulations to Eclipse, uh, being the faster car in that second run. Uh, just one time, because I've, I've got the names here. Uh, Maisie? Yes, yeah. There you go, Maisie's the bag. Uh, Evie? Yeah. There we go, hand up there. And then Benedict or Isaac? I'm Isaac. There you go. Well, listen, guys, it was great to meet you. Uh, faster in that uh, car B. Uh, best of luck. Um, and hopefully see you for the award ceremony. Thank you very much for taking part. Thank you very much. There you go. Uh, great team there all the way in Faversham in Kent. Um, and Lucy, I could have wasted. Congratulations, top of the leaderboard, fastest car at the moment. Uh, you've got no one to celebrate with in the team, but I'm sure that you'll send them a message now and give them a call. Yeah, yeah they got cut out just before we came on. So I'll oh, give them hang a message on. in a bit. Hang on, uh, developments are happening right here. What? <laughs> they don't look as pumped as I am. Uh, <laughs> Lily May and Pat, talk to me. <laughs> Listen, uh, you had a strict oh, yeah. time. Oh, yeah. Hello. Hi. <laughs> you had a strict time on where to be. Apparently it's your connection that's letting you down, but great to see. I was worried that Lucy would have to celebrate on her own for currently being the fastest yeah. car in the grid. But listen, uh, congratulations. Okay. Great to have you here. I'll say goodbye to you. It's a hi and a goodbye. Very quick. Uh, lovely to see you. Enjoy the rest of the day. See you hopefully at half past two for the award <laughs> ceremony there. There you go. Uh, look, they made it. That's the most important thing. They said hi. Yeah, that's enough, isn't it? You don't want to overdo it. You know, <laughs> Lucy done all the hard work. Uh, there you go. Uh, we move on then uh, to the development class. Uh, now to the suffragettes. This is the last two uh, races in the development class. Suffragettes from Whitley Bay High School taking on Apollo Racing in a Calde Grange Grammar School. So uh, we see the designs up here. Oh, gone for a purple, a sort of purple-esque. A uh, car on the left there, uh, and then a car on the right, Apollo Racing. What do you like about these designs then, Georgina? So, a few things I like. I like the, uh, the sleek look of both the cars, especially Apollo Racing has got kind of a, a bullet-type design on the front, um, and also their, their front wing aiming to send the air up and over uh, the front wheels. Uh, so we'll have to see how that fares out, as well as Suffragettes doing the same with their front wing. Mm. Uh, but looking at the weights, particularly 60.1, 60.2, 60.1 and 60. So should be a very, very close race. Uh, I want to ask uh, the aerodynamic physicist, uh, <laughs> Sophie, over there. Uh, just 
curious, it caught my eye, and I think you notice things in the F1 in schools, uh, with the world champions, their car uh, had a kind of, it sloped from the back downwards to the front of the car. Do, what sort of aerodynamics does, does that affect with the car? Yeah, so that's a drag removal technique. So that's to try and stop, so at the back of your car, if you've got a flat end, you can get the fall off of air at the back and it creates this sort of drag effect, so it slows you down essentially. Um, whereas if you smooth it off towards the back, you can essentially taper that off, so you're stopping your air from tagging behind and making it a bit draggy. So it is a slight difference, a slight change, and you do see that in the Formula One cars as well, that they use this technique. Okay, I'm gonna make it just slightly spicier right now. <laughs> in the Denford factory, by asking Sophie, by looking at the design, just purely looking at the shape of the car, which one do you think is going to be fast on the track? Ooh. Don't forget, I will be talking to both teams, so no pressure. Oh no, don't do that to me. <laughs> um, my, from my aerospace world, I would choose Apollo Racing, and okay. also because you know I like anything space themed. However, um, it's not to say that that's going to be a huge deciding factor, really. Okay. I think it'll be a bigger factor, potentially things like your winglets on the on the, the rear wing. So we'll see, okay. see what happens. I, mm -hmm. I, okay. Uh, the time to be in a development class, uh, I believe we'll find out 1.29. I believe John... 293, I did hear quite well there. Uh, thank you very much, John, uh, the F1 in schools team behind, uh, telling me that is the time to be. I put Sophie on the spot there. It's time now to find out what the suffragettes feel about that. Uh, good afternoon to you guys. Oh, Darcy, well done on getting all the team members in one shot there. Uh, that is great with the phone. Uh, so listen, Adele, I love the backdrop there. That is a brilliant backdrop. Thank you. Uh, what was your involvement uh, getting here to the Nationals? Um, well, I was the financial manager, so I've had to deal with all the finances and stuff. Uh, how have you found that? Uh, a lot of teams have found it very difficult to get the sponsorship, but, but how did you find it? It was very difficult at first because we had no experience of doing this beforehand, so we went in not knowing anything, but as we've progressed throughout the competitions, we have got used to it and found it easier. Okay, uh, Darcy, I have to say, the person in the phone looks incredibly similar to you. It looks like, you, it looks like you've recorded that earlier uh, to, to play out. Uh, what was your involvement in the team? Um, I was a graphic designer throughout regionals and nationals. Okay, and, and how do you think the car will perform on the track today? Um, I think it will do quite well because Rachel and Adele have worked really well together to create a really good car. Um, and I think it's going to go really well. Okay, I like that positivity. Well, great to meet you as a team, Suffragettes. Uh, Engine of Change is the name of your car. Uh, well, hopefully you will change that. 1.293 is the time to beat. Uh, let's chat to the other team that will be on the track with you. Apollo Racing from Calday Grange Grammar School in West Kibbe. Um, Luca getting all of the sunshine. We're currently in the Denford factory uh, right now, uh, so we're not seeing any of that sunshine. Um, are you looking forward to the race? Uh, yeah, well, um, I can just say, uh, yeah, it's been exciting. Um, it's good to know uh, Sophie's on our side, though. Um, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm unbiased. Like. Yeah. She, she's even got a flag of your team colours ready to wave around <laughs> if, you, if you win. <laughs> um, okay, great to, to know that. Uh, Adve, uh, are you the team manager? You've got a globe behind you, which I think uh, yeah. you're just setting your scenes on, your eyes on going to the world. Uh, what have you enjoyed about this challenge? I think it's been a great experience as a team for us to come together and just learn a lot about engineering. And it's just been a great uh, time for all of us. Yeah, and uh, Siddharth, uh, wearing the cap there, uh, some of the merch, uh, what was it like designing all of the logos and, and your team branding? Uh, well, we wanted to stand out um, in what we did, so our colour scheme was very um, unique to us. And um, yeah, we tried to stand out um, above all other teams. Yeah, well, I'm liking it. I, I sort of got my eye on one of those caps. So if there's any going spare, uh, it'd be great. Uh, listen, uh, best of luck on the track. I'm hoping to see what happens uh, and who gets the fastest time. So best of luck. We'll go trackside now with Oscar. And here we go then.
Ooh, seven hundredth of a second between the two there. Yeah. Uh, so Apollo Racing just taking the win. Uh, so Sophie was correct on that one, <laughs> but not by much. <laughs> but you know, it doesn't have to. We didn't say it was going to be by much. You no. know. Uh, yeah. So a very very close race. It'll put them quite close together in the leaderboard. Yeah, well obviously they had to be 1.293, so they've both done that. They now both go into the lead in the development class. So well done to both teams there. Um, and if anyone was wondering, uh, I will ask uh, Georgina to decide who is gonna win in the next race. So <laughs> if we have to be Ooh. fair uh, here. Uh, all right then, uh, Apollo, uh, well done on that. Um, obviously going straight into the lead, must be very happy with how that's performed, your car. Well, yeah, we, I think Sid Art has done a great job and Luca working together on the car and then obviously Luca finishing it off the manufacturing engineer. You might have missed that, Adve. Uh, Sid Art uh, took his hat off to you uh, and that is great respect uh, to the team manager uh, through that. You've also got another race so you could even uh, get faster. I just want to chat to the suffragettes though. Uh, so we'll come back to you in a second, Apollo Racing. Um, Orla. What did you make of yeah. that? It's a very fast car, just didn't quite have enough to beat Apollo Racing, but you've still got another race. I think we're quite proud of how far it went, and even though it didn't win, we're still really happy with the results. Okay, and Maya, would you, would you agree with that? Yeah, I'd agree. Okay, brilliant. Well, there you go. All in agreement with the suffragettes uh, and someone on the mobile phone. No name for that person. I'll work out who that is. Uh, is it Rachel? Yeah, it is Rachel. There we go. We can't hear Rachel, but we can see her. Uh, so listen, let's go back down to the track side to see whether the suffragettes can get an even faster time. But currently, that is first and second place to these two teams. The last one's in the development class. The button has been pushed by Oscar. Here we go. So 1.284 for Apollo Racing there, giving them a win again on that one. But Suffragette faster through the, uh, the, the first split. So uh, some interesting results there for the teams to take away. And I'm sure if they're developing on the car for next year, then they'll be uh, keen to see those stats. Yeah, things to learn from that then. Uh, who shall I come to? Uh, Maya, listen, um, it, it wasn't fast enough to beat Apollo Racing, but uh, a very, very good time. Second uh, in the leaderboard then. Yeah, that was... Okay, and there's things to take away from that if you'll be competing next year. Uh, Rachel was celebrating by the looks of things on, on the screen. She can't even hold the phone straight, just, just cheering uh, at the moment. Uh, well, listen, uh, Adele, money well spent uh, and in terms of getting the sponsor in and the marketing. Uh, so congratulations to all of the team there uh, with the suffragettes. Uh, Maya, Orla, uh, Darcy, Adele and Rachel. Hopefully we'll see you at half past two for the award ceremony. Take care and enjoy the rest of the afternoon until then. Uh, we'll go back to Apollo Racing, Calday Grange Grammar School, West Kibbe. Uh, listen, Siddharth, ha very happy with that. You doffed your cap earlier, then 1.284, really fast time. Yeah, um, I think the whole team is um, proud of what we've done. And always, um, there's always room for improvement. So next year we are looking to get back stronger. Yeah, and Luca, uh, I can confirm, uh, Sophie uh, was cheering uh, with the correct decision on the uh, design of the car. So well done, Luca. <laughs> Listen, guys, uh, Apollo Racing there. Uh, great to chat to both teams. That is the development class done, which means, uh, oh, wait, no, one more. One more to go in the development class. That was the penultimate one. So there's still yes, a chance to change up the leaderboard. I thought it was all over, but now I'm even more excited by the possibility the next team up could post a faster time. And that is going to be Spiritus 6 from Bab Lake School taking on IQ. Uh, from North London Collegiate. So what do we like about these designs then, Georgina? Because I want you to look at them intently because you'll be putting <laughs> your opinion on which one will be faster <laughs> just based on the design. Ooh, so looking at those designs, we've both gone for the nice red colour. Uh, lighter weight on the both cars at 60.2. As we were mentioning before, very def difficult to achieve both the same weight. Um, the rear wing design is quite different between the two of them, so IQ going for more of a, uh, a stuck-on, uh, out type of 
wing, whereas Spiritus is going for the lifted wing straight across the back. Um, but both cars looking quite smooth, uh, both with some interesting, some different but interesting front wing designs. Um, so yes, that's a one tough decision for me to make, Tom. I know it's a tough decision, but unfortunately, I'm going to have to. <laughs> <laughs> going to have to go for it. So I think that IQ might just take the win on that one there. But looking at Car B from Spiritus, uh, with the with the nice tight dimensions around their regulations, could also could also take it. So we're going IQ. Okay, I thought you were going to genuinely sit on the fence there and say both of them could win it, but uh, great stuff there. Uh, here we go. Um, oh, let's talk to Spirit of Six from Bab Lake School, Coventry, Warwickshire, um, to find out about their car A and car B. That is one big team. Love to see it. Um, great. Look at those backgrounds. Oh, backgrounds are amazing. Mm -hmm. Moving there. Uh, T Ruff, uh, up in the top left there, I see your backdrop. Um, Tell me uh, what your involvement was in this team. Um, for, for our team, I was the, the manufacturing engineer. So I helped design and create on CAD the car and like further develop it from our regional final. And, and speaking to Georgina uh, and obviously her involvement in F1 in schools, uh, you, you went, if you, had you used CAD before? How, did you find it frustrating? Did you find it rewarding when you got the hang of it and you just made improvements all the time? How, how did you find that process? Yeah, at the start, understanding how like, the dimensions work, how to get different like, curves and shapes. So at first it was a challenge, but drawing over like these past two years of F1 in the school has really helped improve my skills in CAD, especially in SolidWorks. Yeah, and t Ruff, who is the manager of your team? Uh, Josh. Ah, OK, Josh Spiritus, my favourite name. Uh, I also like Simon down in the bottom corner, who is walking uh, whilst he's on the move. I like that. There's movement constantly happening. Uh, Josh, uh, tell me about your sort of um, lessons that you learned being the team manager. Uh, well, sometimes it's kind of hard to control and lead a team, so I've had to put my foot down often and become more assertive in leading this group of people. Uh, they all looked a little bit nervous when you said you're going to have to put your foot down again. They know the wrath of Josh uh, by the looks of things. Abby, is, is that true? <laughs> Um, yeah, quite true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good to hear. Uh, Abby, how do you feel about the uh, the speed of your uh, car? How do you think it's going to fare on the track? OK, I think. I'm not too sure. OK, and name of the car is called Opportunity. Uh, this is a great opportunity, without being too cliche, to overtake there and get to the top of the leaderboard. You reckon you've got a good chance? Um, yeah, I would say so. OK, good. I like that. Uh, conviction and positivity. Listen, I'll chat to you, rest of the guys, uh, in just a second. Uh, let's go over now uh, to talk to IQ in Edgware, London. Um, and I know from being up that part of London how busy the roads are. Not much speed from the cars, but I'm expecting more from yours. Uh, Lara, uh, in the top left, I can see all your sponsors uh, in the side. Uh, very well done. What was your involvement in the team? Um, so I was the manufacturing engineer and I did help with the CAD design a little bit but afterwards I coordinated the manufacturing and obviously getting all the components made, put together and getting the cars up to the correct weight. That is brilliant. I, when you say you helped out a little bit, then who did you leave most of the work to in your team for CAD? Um, the design engineer. Uh, which was who? Okay, uh, can we speak to the CAD uh, designer? Hey, so I'm Diora and I did um, the CAD. So it was obviously really difficult at the start because uh, we never had any experience, but all together as a team, we worked really hard and we figured out the CAD and I think we're really confident about our car and about our CAD skills now. OK, uh, so very confident with the design, the make of it. Uh, do you think it's got enough to beat 1.284, Diora? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, we just want to do as best as we can. And obviously, with the whole COVID situation, we weren't able to physically test our car, but we have used sort of a 
iteration of our regionals car and we're confident that it can do really well. Okay, all right. Well, listen, best of luck. Great to, to see all of the team uh, very much on point with the PR, looking after those sponsors. So well done to you guys. Uh, let's get down to trackside then, as we have Spiritus 6 taking on IQ. Here we go then. Best of luck, Georgina. No pressure on you. You said which one was going to potentially win. Here we go. So IQ have taken that one. Uh, the so smile on your face. <laughs> <laughs> didn't want to guess wrong, but we've got the second race to come as well. Yes. So who knows, it all could change. So 1.239 there for IQ. Uh, so taking that very, very fast time. Um, and looking at the split, they're four hundredths of a second difference between the two cars. Uh, so I imagine the teams are very happy with those scores. Yeah, IQ just in the background here, the, the br brimming with the smiles there because they know with a 1.239 they are now top of the leaderboard uh, overtaking Apollo. Uh, let's come to Emily. Emily, uh, chuffed with that. Uh, you know you've got car B but already top of the leaderboard. It doesn't matter. Yeah, no, definitely very happy with that and that's actually faster than our. That to uh, Alyssa, what, what would you... Uh, the new iteration? Um, I'm not entirely sure. I mean, I didn't really oversee the whole design, but I think Emily was the one who oversaw it, so she can tell you what she thought was the best. Okay, well, pass back to Emily. Emily, is it down to that iteration? Um, hopefully, yeah. I think we're bang on, well, only very slightly over the weight limit, which definitely, like the minimum weight, which definitely plays like a big part, and then modifications to the wings slightly as well. Okay, all right, well listen, IQ, well done on that time. Uh, back now uh, to uh, the guy Spiritus 6, because um, you mentioned, Georgina, better in that car B in terms of that might give them a few... Yes, slightly lighter, which might give them a advantage uh, during the launch phase, um, as well as the use phase as well, it could have some impacts. Yeah. And, uh, Hopefully it's not a Honda engine in this one, because uh, that wouldn't be great. Uh, Alexander, uh, what was your involvement in the team? And, and do you think uh, Car B is going to fare better? Well, I was the sponsor of the marketing guy. Um, and I was quite different sponsors during lockdown because of the pandemic. So we had to basically make do with the money we had left over from regionals. Okay. Um, but from regionals, we had fantastic support from our sponsors. So we obviously managed to do that. Um, I think our car will be faster with Car B because it's lighter and, well, that makes a whole load of difference in time. Definitely so. does. Listen, and that sounded like a true marketing man was able to take a situation and, and get the best out of it. And Simon, I've decided you're best with the sunglasses on. So if we could have the sunglasses on, please. Uh, you haven't been able to decide. There we go. Now piece we're cooking. Piece of fans, a piece of fans. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Let's get to the track side then. Best of luck uh, to Spirit of Six and IQ. See if they can set even faster times. So IQ winning that one there at 1.301, um, but the fla fastest split going to Spiritus uh, again on that one, I believe. I think yeah. it's the same last time. Um, so look at both the cars going down the track there. And they both, both survived all the way through the deceleration gates as well. Uh, so even though it, was, it didn't have quite as much money as they'd have hoped to manufacture that one, yeah. They've still been able to create a good, really strong car. And with that faster time in the, in, uh, the second race, they've been able to, able to move up three places. So let's have a quick look at that leaderboard then, because that is officially the development class uh, done and dusted uh, there. This is an overall leaderboard of times, not just in a development class, this is professional as well. Because at a moment there, we were looking at Spiritus thinking, 20, 20 seconds uh, of the development class. But no, this is both professional and development there, uh, are times there. So that just goes to show what IQ speed has done in the development and not far off uh, the top teams in the professional. Yes, which is a good achievement for the teams, especially for the development for this one year. Hopefully next year they'll be able to progress and with the extra freedom of being able to change the wheels might 
result in some faster times. Yeah, Spirit of Six, Ellie, we didn't speak to you. Uh, what are you going to take from uh, these track results uh, moving forward? And is something 2021 something that you would like to develop and maybe come back again? Yeah, obviously our team is split with different year groups, so we may have to say goodbye to some of the members. members. But um, we will develop, and obviously going into professional class, if we did continue, obviously we would have bigger freedom and more opportunities to develop the car. Yeah. Um, uh, will Josh, team manager, are you one of those people that might be moving on as team manager? Uh, yeah. In my final year of school, about to my GCSE, so I'll have to say goodbye to the team this year. Okay, all right. Well, listen, uh, they've enjoyed your authority and stamping down uh, when you needed to. So congratulations. Uh, great result there uh, for your guys. Great to chat to Spiritus 6 from Bab Lake School. Um, and IQ, there you are. Congratulations. Uh, that time you set in the development class is almost uh, there or thereabouts up there with the professional class. You must be very happy with that, Isabella. Yeah, I'm incredibly proud of our team. We have some really amazing engineers, so it's all really down to everyone's hard work. Yeah, and, and is there a scope to come back for the professional class in 2021? I would love to. I believe I would be too old and Alyssa as well, um, but I really can't wait to see what the rest of our team gets up to when they do it. So. OK, well, listen, uh, we wish you all the best. Hopefully see you at half past two. Uh, for uh, our awards ceremony. But lovely to see all of your faces this afternoon. Uh, enjoy the rest of you, your afternoon. Um, right, we head on now to round 16 and 17 of the professional class. This is the last in the professional class. And then that is all of the racing done for today. Um, it's, do you know what, it's sort of flown by. It, there's been lots of races has. going on. Yeah, lots of races, lots of good cars to see, great teams to talk to as well, so. Yeah, um, Britannia Red on the left of the screen, Robert May School, Oddie Ham, Hampshire, uh, taking on a Slide Sports Entity, Hanson School. Now, you know someone from that team. Uh, we'll wait one second, but what would you notice from the Britannia Red? It's a very streamlined design. Yes, it is very streamlined design from both cars, really. Um, Britannia Red going for kind of a, a flatter peak at the start with their nose cone, uh, whereas Slide Sports Entity going straight into that uh, cone design. Um, but looking at the cars, Slide Sports Entity was our one to watch with the foam wheels. Um, but Britannia Red having that curved rear wing design could, could have some aerodynamic impacts. Yeah, Sophie, what aerodynamic impacts can you see just, just visually looking at the two designs? Yeah, I think the main one is that curve at the back, as Georgina just said. So that cylindrical shape on the Britannia Red can, could give them the edge um, that, that others have also also seen proven in, in the scores so far. So um, that could be one to be interested for. But the streamlined shape of like the cylindrical um, body of the the slide sports entity one could could also give them an edge. So it's it's interesting to see how that's. And I think potentially the mass on this one may play a big part because you've got a good grab between the two, um, so that, that, could, that could play big, big impact here. Okay, well, let's find out. Uh, Britannia Red uh, from Robert May School, Odiham, Hampshire, hopefully will be joining us uh, to say a few words about their journey that they've been on. Oh, look at that, waves as well. Britannia Red on point. Uh, great to see you all again. Recognise uh, many of those uh, faces there. Uh, Amelia, Ted, Zach, Abby, uh, Queeve, is it Queeve? Oh, I do apologise, and Callum as well. Um, I just, I, do you know what? That's what happens. I should have been like we've been saying. I should have tested before I went live, but no chance. Uh, so listen, Britannia Red, are you looking forward to getting on the track and racing the car? Yes, definitely. Yeah, it's going to be good. Um, we put a lot of uh, work and testing into this, so it's uh, all coming down to this one race. So we're quite nervous, but we're really looking forward to uh, seeing how our car. Yeah, and uh, obviously, great to see you all again. What have you learned uh, in this journey? What, if you to put it down to maybe two things that you've learned from regionals to a final, what, what is it? Um, in terms of car, I think you learn a lot from the finals. Um, it's a lot of uh, finals, and we improved our car from there. So we've been working on um, the finish of our car, and the, the wheels as well, so we've made a lot of improvements since the race. So. Yeah. And um, for more uh, enterprise and verbal presentation, 
Uh, we, with, uh, with doing our um, verbals pre-recorded, it allowed us to sort of watch over our verbals, which is something you don't really get to do uh, at proper competition. And so we could really pinpoint uh, certain areas to work on. Um, it allowed us to improve our, uh, our vocal presentation. Yeah, I tell, you, I tell you what, with a booming voice like you have, there is no need for a microphone. Absolutely amazing projection there from that team member. Uh, well done. Listen, guys, uh, best of luck. Uh, we're just going to chat uh, to your opposition on the track. Uh, that slides boy entity, the teacher of this uh, team from Hanson School. Uh, good afternoon, Simon. Uh, what have you learned through this process looking at your pupils and, and how they've dealt with everything over the last five months? Um, well, they did really well because they, they did the regionals and they had a meeting came up with a big list of things to improve the car. And obviously, COVID couldn't that up. They, um, a list of essential and desirable criteria, the, the essential criteria first, and then desirable a bit of crisis management to try and get ready and prepared for the race this year. Yeah, and obviously in that team, Ryan, Bailey, uh, Humera, Sam and Beth, uh, they'll be probably watching right now, hoping that they can set a fast time. Uh, have, have they been doing any testing? Have they been able to test it on the track? Yeah, they tested on a track. We've got a track in school, so they did quite a bit of testing, but they were the final design, so hopefully it should be good. All right, well, keep those uh, fingers crossed, Simon. Uh, to see if we can set a fast time. Might be coming back to you in just a second. Best of luck to both teams. Uh, Slide Sports entity, as you heard there from the teacher Simon, having to deal with some adversity, but they're on the track, ready to go. Oscar's pushing that button and away we go. Fast times there, Britannia Red, 1.106. I think that's joint walking, second. <laughs> walking forwards to see the time on the screen there. Yeah, that's what happens. If you're off one laptop and you've got to fit all the team in, you've got to stand well back. Uh, so there you go. Uh, Britannia Red, uh, Red uh, very happy with that. We're seeing the replay off to a very fast, like just saying very stable and just in one straight line zipping along there uh, 1.106 i believe that second place that would put them at that speed so i think we've had a yes, 1.103 yes we clear. have so second place uh, britannia red are we happy with second place i don't know what's got the giggles uh, <laughs> to some of the team members uh, are we happy with 1.106 do we think you can go faster with car b um uh, we're very happy with that time. Uh, we're glad that the car went down the track in uh, one piece, I think. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're really happy with that time. Um, uh, the car being looks like let our race, hoping to uh, maybe improve, but that time's really good for us. So I, I just want I just want to ask because I, I think for a minute with the who would be if we were trackside right now, who would be fixing uh, the broken car? Whose job role would have that been? Hello, hello. Yeah, so you can relax a little bit here. You can just, just take a little bit of time and just relax. Uh, no need to fix anything right now. All right, Britannia Red, uh, well done on everything there. Um, uh, Slide Sports Entity, uh, obviously with their teacher, Simon, um, will be very happy with that. Happy with that performance so far? Yeah, it's a pretty good time. It's not bad at all, that. Yeah, and looking forward to car B uh, getting on the track. It's just being put into position. Uh, Simon, uh, with the, obviously this is professional class, some of those people who are competing, uh, will they be able to compete again or, or will you get a new roster of people stepping up to the professional class? I think it'll be the last year of Entity. We've got two girl teams coming through. They did entry last year, so there'll be development for this year. Oh, brilliant. Well, I look forward to that. And uh, obviously, they'll be able to leave, hopefully, the blueprints uh, for the next teams coming up. Uh, let's have a look at the leaderboard then. Let's see where we are with that. As you can see, Britannia Red, joint uh, second, joint second. Place. Oh, St. Olaf's Grammar School, Electron, and then Aquilia Racing in first place with 1.103. The big question then is, well, they've lost a the team member, Britannia Red. Maybe they've gone further away to shout. Uh, oh, just oh, stepping he's, up. He's back, <laughs> he's back again. Uh, there we go. Love to see it. All right. Can they beat 1.103? <laughs> it is time to find out. My fingers are crossed uh, for this. Maybe we can break that one second barrier. Who knows?
It was quick, very it quick. It was quick. 1.13 from Sly Sports Entity to lead them to the win there, but 1.164. So they didn't quite manage to take the top spot on that final race. Yeah, but look at that cruise uh, speed. Uh, what did you notice from that watching the replay, Sophie? Anything uh, spring out there or jump at you? Yeah, it's, it's interesting that because the first time the cars seemed to be very central coming down. The second time they almost curved slightly to the right, um, which makes you think that maybe these cars aren't quite as symmetric or potentially their mass isn't quite as distributed as it as the first car, which got them slightly faster. So. It is interesting to see that sort of slow down impact towards the end and how they are slightly close to the barrier this time round. Um, well, I have been informed uh, via the communication system, someone shouted, no, they didn't, uh, they just said through my ear, that was a DNF for Slide Sports uh, because the hubcap came off before it crossed the line, but uh, they will obviously be taking that original time they had. Uh, I see Britannia Red still there, uh, didn't get to beat that time. Uh, obviously, Adam, you might have been able to help uh, with gluing back uh, for the other opposition uh, with all the, the toolbox you'd have had. Uh, but Britannia Red, are you satisfied with second place for today? Yeah, definitely. Really happy with how our car did. Yeah, I usually would get to race a few times, so I think our wheels and as warmed up as they could be, but um, pretty happy with what we've got. And, uh, yeah. yeah. We're, all right, like, good. Good, and I like the jackets there, looking very waterproof, getting ready for the wet weather that is coming at some point. Uh, well done, guys. Listen, we, we're chatting to you, no doubt, later on in the award ceremony. It's so lovely to see you all again. Uh, and a quick final chat with uh, Simon uh, from Slidesport Entity. Uh, we heard that you're going to have some more development classes uh, coming up. And um, what a great opportunity for them to learn from the uh, experiences that the other team for them when they come up. Yeah, it is. Yeah, they'll learn a lot as well. And I've learned a lot as a teacher, so we should be able to combine that together for a women, winning team next year. Perfect. Uh, uh, well, listen, I, I hope to see that. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day, Simon, and maybe see you at a half past two award ceremony. Nice to meet you. Thank you. There you go. Uh, done. Uh, right. That was it. That was the penultimate race in the professional class. Will we see 1.106 beaten today? Uh, and I know that some people are watching thinking, I would like to see under one second. So this table gets flipped uh, and then someone has to fix it before the awards ceremony at half past two. Uh, we move on then to Genesis uh, from uh, Linlithgow uh, Academy taking on Aspire 6. Uh, from Lee Siles High School. Uh, Georgina, uh, we had the Aspire 6 car come in, uh, the last one to actually arrive uh, in the competition, but what do you make of, well, that's not actually the picture of it, but Genesis are over on the left. What do you make of their design? Yeah, so Genesis looks like quite a speedy car. They've got some, I believe it had some biomimicry that we were discussing from their portfolio yesterday. Uh, so looking at the kind of a Kingfisher type uh, design. Um, and then looking at the front wing as well, I believe it's been painted over. We'll have to ask the team in a minute, uh, which has meant that it's very nice and smooth. OK, all right, well, we will ask them. Uh, Aspire 6, when we get the cars on the track, I'll make sure that we have a little closer inspection of the car uh, as um, we haven't got a picture of it. But Genesis, uh, an exciting team. We entered into the competition last season and originally picked it as we liked the sound. And it is roughly translated to new beginnings. That's what Genesis is. So we will ask them about uh, the front where we've got Ellen, Ethan, Douglas and Robin. Uh, there we go. In all the gear. Uh, good afternoon to you guys. Um, so who leads this operation? Who is the manager? Uh, uh, Ellen. Hey, Ellen. <laughs> uh, great to have you here. Um, Georgina wants to know about that front uh, wing. Uh, was it recently painted? Uh, yeah, I do all the painting and prepping of the cars. And we were just testing out our new airbrushing techniques to try and get the gradient on the car. So that's how it's been painted. Ah, so the front wing has been painted to make it smoother to try and give you some aero advantage? Yeah, generally um, it makes the surface a little bit more smooth and just improves the overall air resistance on the car. Yeah, definitely. Also intrigued to hear about your wheel design as well. Uh, Ethan's probably the best one to answer that. He's our design engineer. Fibre chip, into lots of little bits and then use those for the wheels because it's like really light and strong. Ah, so some 
different different ways of creating faster cars. And um, and throughout the whole of that, Robin, you were nodding uh, furiously there. The car named Delta. What what was your uh, involvement in, in in the team? Um, I'm the social media and marketing manager. Okay, and how did you find that, that process of being on the social media and uh, obviously constantly getting it out there to people who are interested in your whole process? Yeah, our aim was to reach as many people as possible. So um, it wasn't easy, but we've managed to build a following through um, talking to people at our school and uh, a lot of work within our local community, trying to get uh, a lot of one let's go involved in it. Okay, and, and obviously with that social media, has it helped your own social media? Um, not really, no, but I've learned how to do Twitter now, so... <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Listen, great to chat to you guys. Uh, best of luck. Uh, hopefully, we can chat to Aspire 6. And there they are as well, Jessica, Madison, and uh, Junaid. Um, listen, uh, one missing. We're missing Ali. Uh, and actually, we're also missing uh, Cledia. Uh, who is the manager of this team? Oh, Madison. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Madison. Oh, good use of the mobile phone. I like this technique. Uh, how are you today? Are you excited about getting on the track? Yeah, very. It's okay. been a long time without a car as well. <laughs> oh, have you missed the car? Because you obviously had to send it in, um, and um, obviously you missed that car, but you will get it back. Do you think it will cross the line in one piece? <laughs> okay, perfect. Junaid, what was your role in the team? Uh, I was CAD engineer and manufacturer. Okay, and what did you find? Uh, let's let's ask it differently. What, what was the most easiest part of this process? I think probably printing out the parts, and that was the most easiest bit. And probably the hardest part was like um, sanding and painting the car because it's quite a lot of layers. Okay, um, and, and obviously your other team members are currently in Disney World. Uh, that is Isabel and Jessica. Uh, great to have you here from Disney World. Uh, <laughs> what do you reckon uh, you can achieve with the speeds on the track with your car? Well, hopefully it'll be fast because we've like redesigned it from the regionals because we thought we could make it faster. Oh, perfect. Well, fing oh. fingers crossed. Best of luck to both teams. Uh, great to chat to you. Uh, so there we go then, Aspire 6. And let's have a look at the track now. As you can see, Aspire 6 is car. Hopefully, uh, it will be nice and fast. Best of luck to both teams. It's 1.176 from Genesis there. Um, with a winning that race, uh, but the faster split from Aspire 6 as well. So looking at uh, Aspire 6's car now, it looks as though they've gone for quite a, a nice simplistic design, which is sometimes, sometimes best on the cars, and keeping that rear wing above the deceleration system to make sure it doesn't snap off. Yeah. Afterwards. I'm just jotting that time down. That means uh, Genesis are now in 11th and Aspire are in 23rd. So there you go. Uh, that is of the total leaderboard. Um, Janaid, uh, you enjoyed uh, cutting out all the parts, putting it all together, uh, sanding it down, doing all that you had to do. Uh, do you think that car B will be a little bit faster and, and set a better time for you? Hopefully, yes. Okay, all right, good, I like that. Short and sweet is an answer, yes it will. I like the confidence <laughs> of Aspire 6. All right then, um, let's go across to Genesis uh, then uh, from the Lithgow Academy. Uh, 11th at the moment, is it gonna be faster with those wheels, Ethan, in car B? I mean, I hope so. At regionals, um, we've got 1.076, so hopefully this time we'll get closer to that. Yeah, Douglas, how did you celebrate when it crossed the line? Was there any movement from you, Douglas? Uh, no, because um, just in case we were, we could still hear you guys, or you can still hear us. <laughs> okay, I like that. Yeah, yeah. It's the, the online world, you've got to be very careful. Um, listen, um, well, Douglas, get ready to celebrate if you can beat that time of 1.176. Let's get to the track then, Georgina. Obviously, last race, um, I kind of, how do we savour this race? I don't think there is a way. We just have to just hope we can beat that one second barrier. See if, see if we can make it on this one. Okay. Hopefully we can. 
All right, I'll hold the table down for you. Oh, don't do that. Don't ruin all the fun. Uh, here we go then. Uh, Oscar, when you're ready. Ooh, 1.107 from Genesis there, which will take them into third place, I believe. Yeah. 20.7 metres per second cruise speed, which is, I believe, the fastest we've seen today, or one of the fastest. Definitely. That's incredible. Going from 11th, putting on car B onto the track, uh, and there was some celebration. You can celebrate in any manner you want, <laughs> Douglas, <laughs> and to Robin. Uh, and to uh, Ethan and Ellen. Uh, Got to be happy with that. That was such a jump from 11th up to fourth or third, joint thought, uh, third. Uh, joint, there's two places, at, two teams at second, and then that means they'll be in third. We're ecstatic. That's, yeah. that's brilliant. Ah, really, really <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. It's brilliant to see uh, your genuine happiness with that. Uh, have you enjoyed watching the car? Was it quite nerve wracking? Well, we've got a photo of me from regionals where I look quite like a sweaty mess. My face is bright red, <laughs> so I'm a little bit more calm this time around. Oh, that's but good. No, I'm anxious every time, but so, so happy with that. Okay, well, you can now relax and enjoy it, and uh, we will see you at half past two for the award ceremony. Uh, enjoy the rest of the day until then. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There you go, Genesis. Uh, yeah, it's, it, is, it does get quite hot and tense when you're at trackside, doesn't it? Oh, yes, definitely. <laughs> sweaty. Everywhere. Aspire 6, uh, there you go. Um, improvements can be made for next year, Madison, but as a managerial role, uh, you've got to be happy that you've got to this stage, you've got to the national final. Yeah, up until a few days ago, we didn't really think we could actually have a car to race with, so I'm really happy that we've actually raced. Oh, brilliant. I'm sure the rest of the team uh, shares that sentiment. Um, best of luck. Uh, see you at the awards ceremony at half past two and lovely to, to see you this afternoon. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. There you go. Uh, let's have a look at the leaderboard then, George, because I was going to say fourth, uh, so it would be uh, fourth four. there, it says there, um, because you've got a joint a joint second. Joint second. Wow. Uh, a, race, a brilliant time. We didn't beat the under one second uh, speed, but yeah, very fast at the top there. Yeah, very fast at the top. And you're only four thousandth of a second. Incredibly small amounts of time. Uh, even further down the line, we've got joint first place. So Odyssey and Perry very way through. Well, there you go. Uh, Sophie, uh, did it go as you thought it would do on the track? With uh, any sort of surprises that sort of stood out for you? Not necessarily naming the cars, but things that you sort of saw. Yeah, it was a real mixed bag, wasn't it? It was a real mixed bag of different aerodynamic things that were really helping them out. Um, and I think one of the sort of most consistent things that we saw was sort of build quality and the ones that really had that um, nice finish and smooth finish really made the difference. And I think you can see that in, in the top top end of the, the, the table. Oh, well, listen, it's been brilliant to have you on board. Thank you very much to Sevi. Uh, thank you very much to Georgina uh, for being alongside me uh, and going through all of the designs with me. It's been, it's been really good fun. It definitely has been. It's been a great morning. <laughs> it has Watching indeed. the cars, meeting the teams. Yeah, and some few surprises that came out there. Uh, that's it for us from the racing uh, side of things now. Don't forget to join us at half past two today. So if you're watching on YouTube right now, make sure you subscribe, then you will not miss out on watching the awards ceremony. Uh, we've got lots of trophies uh, and awards and places to um, decide for the F1 in Schools World Finals for the champions of the F1 in Schools UK National Final 2020, supported by Lenovo. Uh, thank you very much to all of the team, especially to Oscar running back and forth, to Nelson, to everyone behind the scenes, to Mark with the videos, and of course, everyone else in the team. And John in my ear, constantly updating me on that leaderboard, which I absolutely love. We will say goodbye for now. We'll see you at half past two.